but mate, I, cheers. I, I my sting up on the ball. <laughs> cheers, mate. Cheers for coming on the potty, mate. Always appreciate it. Always welcome. Oh man, likewise. It's always a blast. Yeah, always. It feels like I'm on the phone here, just talking to you normally. <laughs> oh yeah, we we have these conversations all the time. Anyway, sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, we're recording this, <laughs> but we're, we're we're going we're in an interesting place in history right now. That's for sure. Oh yeah, it's definitely, so many um... so many directions we can be going, and there's a lot of forces. You know, there's a lot of dark forces, but also good forces, all working behind the scenes and bringing out everything. Yeah, which is um. Just like what I was saying before, like it's it's awesome that that's happening because now everything like uh, it's like hold on, stop for a second and let's be aware of what's fucking around us. It's got to be interesting um, looking back on it if things do go back to normal or or a, a better normal or something we don't know yet. We can go like. Fucking, I remember trying to cross the border and I remember trying to fucking buy weed over the border and <laughs> getting it to me in a puzzle box and like shit like that. Like was, everyone's going to have some pretty interesting stories. Like, yeah, it's very, very interesting. Everyone's going to have a story to tell during this time. And oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of find it like... It's it's absolutely shit what's going on. Like it's absolutely shit, but I still feel like there's like a part part of me and a part of everyone that it's like going. It's shit, but it's like finally something's happening. Finally, something that we can all be a part of, and we can all. It's like we all got something to talk about now, or, or like it's it's broken us out of that going that one direction on the same tracks and just not focusing. It's like, you know, when you're driving on the highway or you're driving and uh, uh, Danny was telling me what it means. It's like driving hypnosis or something like that, where you're just like, you're not paying attention to where you're going. You just, you, you're on autopilot. Everything's fucking working. You're braking, you're doing the gears and you get to your destination and you kind of go, wait, I wasn't I was like mentally there that whole fucking drive, but I like knew what I was doing. Yeah. Stopped the yeah. lights, did everything. Totally. But I wasn't really present. I was on autopilot. It's like we've been going down um, like a path in time or whatever as a collective in that sort of autopilot until we something comes out in our road and we've got to, whoa, snap out of it and break and go, oh, the fuck am I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this isn't where I was meant to be going. And we're like, oh, well, this, where can I go? I can go down that road, bring out maps and try to figure out where we're fucking going. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Uh, Just, yeah, because humans are always looking at some sort of a crisis to, to focus all of our attention on. But this one is a bit yeah. intense. Because now that I, now that I, you know, I got I got the devil's breath. It's like it's more real. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I can see. Yeah. Like if it fucked me up, imagine people with a, a bad immune system. I can what see, I mean? like, oh yeah, this yeah. One, this is, yeah. Like for me, it felt That's like a flu, I but. I, you can't say that about everyone, but even the regular yeah. flu would also fuck up a certain percentage of people as well. So, but yeah, what I understand exactly is, right. like, except that it's way more contagious. That's the thing about it. That's like where it's yeah. a bit different. I don't know. So, uh, like, Danny had to remind me even yesterday. I was, like seeing someone drive in the car by themselves with their mask on, and, I was, and like seeing people walk out in the open, like heaps like in a football field with their mask on it's just like fucking no one's around you take it off and i'm like getting frustrated like fucking like you, that's how can you do that in this heat but then i'm then she like remind me like and i'll have to sit back oh yeah there are people that are very vulnerable that are probably haven't left their house because they're so terrified and and like they're like fuck yeah. going outside putting gloves on and shit like fucking everyone's everyone's it's like everyone's a zombie and you got to like try not get bitten and pretend you're one of them. I don't know. So like, yeah, I, I do got to remind myself to be like fucking other people are, you know, generally terrified and a lot of people have a right to be terrified as well. Mm -hmm. And just the normal average person just like shrugs it off. 
It's like, ah, oh, be fucking right. So, yeah. you know, and it's, it's funny, actually, like, oh. we, that we've been calling it the devil's breath and this virus is a respiratory virus. You know what yeah. I mean? So it, actually does, cough. it does actually fuck with your, with your breath. So... How was your like breath and lungs during it? How uh, well? Like, and you're smoking uh, weed as well. <laughs> it's like, it's not like yeah. were you coughing up Imagine, a lung? Um, no, nah, I I feel like the first four days my throat was the same. It wasn't any sore than usual. Uh, but the last couple mm. of days, like once I've got over the majority of the virus, n now I feel like my throat's a little bit drier than usual. But not bad yeah. enough that I couldn't, you know, like smoke a joint or something. But it just helps. Yeah, it helps because I I got the the muscle pains, but like weak weakness in the bones, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so weed just That's interesting. Weed gave me that like, oh, okay, I can just sit here and be sick, and it's it's actually quite enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in a strange way. <laughs> Versus just sitting there. Because, man, yeah, the, first, the first few nights, I was sweating bullets, man. Like, the whole sheets, bed, pillows, just drenched in sweat. Wow. Yeah. Got it all, got it all out. How were you feeling? Were you feeling like you're deep, you're, like, getting it out of your system? Or was it just, like, like fucking you up? Yeah, I was, fight, of, I was fighting it. Fighting it yeah, the first day, it was, like, it was a lot of a mental battle as well, you know? Like, there were times where I was, like, sitting on my, laying on my tummy, and then I was like real, starting to get real sick and I started to feel vomit and I even tasted it a bit. Mm. And then I got up out in the balcony with that fresh air and I started standing up. I'm like, wait a second, I should like at least put myself in a more empowering position instead of like a, like a fetal position or like lying on my stomach, just moaning. Uh, you know what I mean? Like that's just going to make you feel worse. And then yeah. what I did after that, I, I, oh yeah, I got this. My, I got it for Christmas. This VR metaverse oh, yeah. thing, right? I uh, still haven't probably <laughs> seen that yet. I've only seen the Samsung Oh, version. man. Uh, I, I wish I could be the person to introduce you to this experience. <laughs> I could orchestrate you it. Probably be. We will be. Yeah. But I was playing... I, play, I, I played uh, Resident Evil 4 on VR. Yeah. They remade it all for, for VR. And I was, like, picturing in the game that I was like going into my immune system and all these monsters were like coronaviruses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like full on. Yeah. And it's like, cause like when you're putting in, when you're put in that position, your brain doesn't really distinguish between imagination and reality. Right. So like when you're in this VR yeah, system, your subconscious true. is like, no, you're there. You are Leon S. Kennedy saving the president's daughter and you're going to survive, man. You're going to fight so off cool. these horde of monsters. And then, <laughs> and it was really empowering actually. Cause like, I, don't, I ain't got time to be sick. I gotta fucking survive right now. So I'm just like playing this game, killing all these <laughs> monsters. Like, yeah, like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> and yeah, then I had like this That's boss. It. Then I had this Probably. boss battle and then I was like, oh shit. What happened if I die in this boss battle? I got like fuck all health. If I die, because oh, there's nice. probably like, because there's pros and cons, right? Like you have to take, it's a double-edged sword. Like I'm sure you can use it to empower yourself, but if you die, then, then you're screwed. But I ended up surviving and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. This was at my bottom of the barrel during yeah. the virus, by the way. That's what was so amazing about it. Because I thought like, usually when you put it on, you get like motion sickness, but I don't know kind of helpful for a moment <laughs> and my dog just started coming in and <laughs> but as cool as the vr thing is though it will be the end of humanity because i got i'm i'm we like that technology and stuff player one movie yeah i can already see that it's i don't know we're already hijacked on dopamine enough as it is but this is just oh it's just next level man this is like the internet. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't looked into it that much because I'm like kind of, I don't know, I might get a little bit unsettled from what, I'm, what I've just been saying. You know, when you like first start saying this shit and you're just like, no, surely, like, mm -hmm. nah, it can't get this far, could it? And then it actually does. And you're just like, fuck. And then you just keep, I don't know, I guess it's like a disbelief thing. But every time something comes out, it's like, Nah, surely. 
<laughs> I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm getting those vibes with, with the whole metaverse thing at the moment. Like, what about the people that like get fully into it, and then there's people that have never tried it, and like that create a whole another divide of people. Like, oh, yeah, you, you, you're you're passed out of society. The metaverse, you fucking yeah, get out the woods, you fucking. But it's uh, the Matrix, bro. Oh, this is basically the Matrix. That's all. Yeah. I was gonna. Um, I had an interesting week, uh, like a month ago or something, where my phone wouldn't work. My phone wouldn't charge, and like the court, because I like I I'm not very careful with my phone. Like I'll I'll just stick it in the sand to take a photo or a video, and just like <laughs> water and shit goes into it. So I've destroyed the charging port. And I also destroyed it more because I was trying to fix it with a toothpick and just wouldn't work. So I just got frustrated. I went, oh, you little fucking piece of shit. And I broke it even more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I know those. Yeah, oh, my God. So I, use, <laughs> so I had to use this thing. It's like a little magnetic charging plate that you just chuck oh. your phone on and it somehow it like charges it. I need charges one the battery. But um, I didn't have that for like a week and like it made me realize, fuck up, I, I've had my phone on me or near me like <laughs> like throughout my days and stuff like that. And it's just become a normal thing when like we used to not have phones at all. And I was like, uh, before this charger arrived, I had no phone for a week. So I was only able to like reply to people on my computer, which I do um, anyways these days because I'm really trying to, but I still am like go on social media and shit. I, re I really want to like stop um, going on it so much, but um, it yeah, was like, I feel you. yeah, a week without my phone at all. And I was like running around without this brick in my pocket. I was like freely able to run along the beach and not worried about a phone dropping out of my pocket or ride my motorbike and not worry about my mm. phone fucking flinging out in the road or something like that. It was just like, I was free, so free. And I was like, man, this is only just a week without my phone. I feel so good. I feel so like, I don't know. And I was like getting old memories of how life used to be without technology. And it was, um, Interesting enough that in that same week, the the GTA uh, Definitive Edition came out. The old GTAs, like Vice City and shit, they like remastered and brought them back out. And I was like watching trailers for that and just fully being reminded of like what it was like before social media, like when you were in primary school, like before mm. having a phone or like when the only phone to call your mate was your house phone. You're like, Oh fuck. I hope their parents don't answer. So you had to awkwardly be like, Hey, is Jimmy home? Like, I don't know. So I, I like had this thought as well. And I, um, so like, um, thing of it or YouTube video one day, what if the internet goes on a blackout and we're all disconnected from the internet and we have to go back to fucking um, TV stations to watch TV and wait for it on the TV guide. We had to fucking call each other through the landline, mm -hmm. had to send mail, like, and us as YouTubers, like, we'll have to film it and put it on a VCR tape and then try to get it on the fucking TV station. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> how would that be, man? Like, think about it. If we were oh. just completely cut off, like... We'll be like, so, oh no, like thinking we can't handle it. It's like we ran out of food. Like, what do we do? But really, we've lived the life of not having internet. And well, we had internet, but we didn't use it. But we, we, we know what life was like without all that shit. Like, we weren't always looking at a phone or a screen. We were just outside playing. And I don't know, I was just like, yeah, it was like simpler times. We've been what, that all during my week without a phone. What, how would you like if the internet got cut out and because it's like your job and like everyone's way of life and everything, how would you handle not having internet at all? If it was cut tomorrow, what, what would you do? I'll go, like, I guess I'd have to go more grassroots, you know, and kind of have a more yeah. obviously person to person community. Uh, maybe yeah, do like, true. do like, freelancing i could do like photography or videos for other people i want to help out or you know 
give yeah. stuff that way. Well, you'd still be able to make uh, you still be able to make the videos you do. You'd still be able to edit it and put it on like a DVD or something, and then you just oh, make yeah, a newsletter yeah. or something like that. Somehow chuck it up, chuck flyers up in coals and stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> and just like, yeah, make videos and try to sell them. Just DVD, DVD video shops will come back. Video easy and shit. Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. I, I, fucking, oh, I do I'd, miss those days. Yeah. It's, fucking it's also, you know, nostalgia is always like nice. Magic but... and... Now, it's just, yeah. it's just oh, because it's very, today's too much now. I don't know. There's just like, you can't watch every show and movie and it's just like, it's overwhelming at this point. Yeah. When like, you got to sift through all like, that. Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to like be on time for shit. Like, oh, it's got to come on at seven. You're going to miss it. If you don't watch it, then you're not going <laughs> to see it. For months, I used to or tape like, them, and then you the pause new, when the like, when the commercials come in, you know, and then you have to be ready yeah. to fucking re-record before you 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 can already sense like all right, all right after this commercial it's gonna start it's like it's got a rhythm to it. it. You just feel it. <laughs> Those are the days, man. I used to always record the Simpsons like every night. Yeah, that that was when like Dragon Star, Ball Z like, and Simpsons like, ruled. Simpsons. That was like, that mm. basically, you know, raised us kids and Pokemon and whatever yeah Fuck. What else and even there? like before like a movie would come out like for example um like back in the day when the first spider-mans are coming out it's like the only information you get of the upcoming spider-man movie would be if you went to the movies to see another movie and you saw the trailer yeah yeah, yeah. That movie uh, yeah you see the trailer in the cinema before the movie started and then sometimes on TV, as it gets closer to the date, that was your only source. And now it's just like YouTube videos, fucking breakdown videos, fucking, um, uh, you know, new information, leaked, leaked footage. Yeah, you, so you already know the whole plot before, before it comes <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, you know exactly how it ends and what movie's after. And everything before you see it. Like watching the new Spider Man, I knew I knew exactly how it was going to play out. Like, because I've just looked so much into Pretty it. Much. It's just interesting to me to see what they're doing on those kind of videos. But those so, are the type uh, of movies that are like, like, it's fun to fanboy over. Whoa, what was that sound? Yeah, yeah. Oh, was that dude, from me or from you? I'm the biggest you know? Marvel nerd. What was that? A little. I don't know. I just heard like a massive, it was Marvel. like a. Like a mic crackle, like oh, like electro trying, electro trying to get in. Table. Uh, yeah, probably. Oh fuck. Oh, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> now choose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> electro was definitely sick in this one. I really, really like how they like. What's the word? They made it. They made it cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they actually made him sick this time around. Like, actually, Jamie, like, yeah, Jamie Fox. Yeah, fuck that. I'm, I'm still like, uh, we shouldn't talk about it yet. We'll wait till the review. Yeah, 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 we'll wait till the review. I'm just going to spoil it. Like how Thingo dies. No, no, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody dies. <laughs> well, yeah, everyone does. And they realise they're in, in purgatory and they meet each other in the multiverse and they realise life is infinite and they go on and on and on and they realise all this at the end and they hold hands and then um iron man comes back and they they have a good time and um yeah it's a good movie it's <laughs> <laughs> basically the ending of lost <laughs> fucking lost yeah man but, but yeah, yeah man back then it was like a lot more, um more, you go to blockbuster and then you see you can see like recommendations you know like whoever worked there steve's right yeah you read the back of the fucking thing you yeah. just got those two pictures at the back of the video or whatever. Like, look, this movie looks sick. <laughs> you just got two pictures. Fuck yeah. Did I'll you watch ever, this. Did you, awesome. ever use, did you ever used to steal or collect Pokemon cards? Did you ever let a craze when you were younger take oh. over your morals that you had to yeah. steal? Yeah. Oh, probably not so much through the car. Well, like, because my brother 
got the cards and I just like being the younger brother, I just like followed, did what he did. So I got into the cards and shit, but like, ah, oh, something to, nah, I didn't really get into those kind of crazes. I just liked them for the pitches. I had no idea how to play the game or what they were worth or anything like that. I just like literally just like having a picture of my favorite Pokemon and just copying it and drawing them and shit. Mm. But, um, can I guess your favorite stuff? Can I guess your favorite Pokemon? Nah. I reckon you look like a you look yeah, like you, a Charizard. Uh, I, you look like a Charizard man. Am I right? I do like Charizard. I think your favorite. he was actually my favorite. The dragon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember who my favorite was. It was like a Mew, I think. Ah, I yeah. Mew. He was the one that no one could could catch in the original blue and yeah. blue, yellow, and and red. It's yeah, like you had to do I some glitch. Like you had to do like... some sort of a glitch. And I don't know, do some yeah. weird shit. It's like, how do you figure this out? Who figured this? How? Like, it makes no sense. <laughs> so you got to go left up on this edge of this cliff, and then you got to go two steps this way, and then here, and then you got to go on your option, and then equip this item, and then it's like really weird shit like that, <laughs> like this glitch algorithm thing. I don't know how people figure That's that. That's so cool. Oh, man. This is before internet as well. <laughs> Yeah, or still, at the beginning stage, it was at, like, at the beginning stage of the internet. I mean, like pre before everyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Man, like, like people that like can find those like Easter eggs or little hidden things in games and stuff. Like just in any game, even the like latest games that you see, and people just go out and just full like, just dedicate their time to go finding every going every square inch of like a map and trying to find the doorway to the to these like little secret areas of the game is fucking like i'll google like youtube because i'm curious my games like, what are some secrets in my game and like all this shit would come up so like, dude how did you find that but yeah i've been um lucky enough to like in the gta games come across a glitch myself and like all of a sudden my character can fly if i jump off this building and <laughs> into this alleyway i'm just lifting up and i'm flying like yeah. superman and i'm like blowing my mind i fucking figured this out by myself and then i'm trying to look up um shit and there's no videos about it and then later on um people find it and they make videos of it. i was like fucking i found that by myself and like, <laughs> so i understand how like people come across it but it's just it's so many it's so many games people like yeah actually go out looking for it and find all this shit it's pretty cool. Do you think that we have that here? Yes, like, that's a little, what I call it, Easter egg hunting. Like, like yeah, do you think that we have? Uh, I know that we definitely have Easter eggs and stuff, or at least the real life equivalent of what that is, zoomed out. Gle- like, like glitches and Easter eggs. Glitches. Yeah, like, glitches. Do you think that there are glitches in real in real life, like legitimate glitches where you're like you're, you're walking and then all of a sudden you like and then <laughs> come back to normal or something, or start floating. You can start Fuck flying me. over the ocean or something like Man. that. <laughs> I've definitely seen glitches before my eyes. But like, yeah, I do. I, I have thought that, like, like, what if there's, like, a secret door or something, like a tree that you, that you can just fucking walk right through, like Wakanda on um, it's a big s- screen. Like, Wakanda, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Yeah, like fucking who knows? Like, and maybe people that have found it um, can't can't come back home. Hold on. There's no way home. Probably have to. Someone, someone's home. Who's that? Oh, I think it's my dad. Oh, I can. You'll probably be making noise out here, making coffees and shit. So I can I can move this into the other room if you want. All right. Easier. I reckon. Uh, yeah. I might even oh. change change my Wi-Fi because it's man, our internet here is poo poo. I'll bring you into the other room, so I'm not. Cause I'm in the living room. This NBN bullshit. It was a lie, Jared. It was a lie. They said it would be better. This is the worst. Oh shit. Worst internet I've experienced since dial-up. Did you guys get N- NBN? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't even know what any of that is. 
Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. It's just the new internet. And it sucks. And they made everyone get it. They made basically Australia upgrade to it. And then I'm just being worse. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, I think we do have that. They all sound the same to me. That's all, yeah. <laughs> Technical gibber jabber. Hey, <laughs> you've got the, the Mike Nolan uh, tradie shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, make that a bit more presentable. There we go, mate. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sweet. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. And we're back. Oh, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My mic working? Yeah. Oh, so what's the, what's the plan for 2022? It's been happening. Oh, good question. Well, actually, I'm sitting right now in uh, the... Um, Going to start bringing out some merch. Actually got some shirts here. Won't, won't show you what it is, but um, yeah, going to be bringing out the merch again. Oh, sweet. Oh. Um, that's coming out. Yeah, that'll be up and running... I don't know, soon. I'm, I'll, I want to get this new show out the way and kind of like um, bring that out and then bring the merch out with it and kind of like uh, kind, of, kind of the jump start, like to let everyone know that like I'm going to be working on shit now and um, yeah, just get the ball rolling a bit and trying to get everything to fall in line with it. So that, that's the that's this year's plan <clears throat> and just making shows because um. Uh, yeah, as fans probably have been asking me, they're like, fucking, uh, it's almost like I've taken a massive break and haven't released anything in like years or since, since I made Mike Nolan's Long Weekend, but I've actually been super busy um, in between all that time, like, as you know, like mm -hmm. making this, coming up with this new show and shit. And um. Yeah, fucking, yeah. I like almost going on a network and everything and, and that just like didn't fully go go as planned, but like in a, in an awesome way. So I was like, uh, that's, a whole, that's a whole another story. Um, I've told you about that, haven't I? Yeah, and yeah, I was of, course, like, of course. It was a blessing, a blessing in disguise, you know, at the end. So that's good. Yeah. It was awesome. Like, oh, yeah. it was cool to like, to like, have my foot in that world. Like, for that, for those who who are fans of the show and listening, like, I almost got a show with a network overseas in America. Like, I did the whole flying to America and meeting fucking legit people in in fucking office buildings and shit, and like pitching my show ideas and 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 having it just go through a process of fucking tons of different people and, and executives and producers and even lawyers and, and all this <laughs> shit. It was brand new to me. The hell? That's full on, man. Like the Mr. And, Burns um, team of lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, but all kinds of people, man. And yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah. just like, just very myself of like just wearing flip-flops and shit and they're all like some of them were in suits and but they're all like really cool easy going people but um it was just such a long process like it went on for like two years talking to them and then um like flying over to america and and meeting with these um uh the the i'm not sure if i'm allowed to talk about it or if i'm not but like fuck it it was adult swim and um it was it was really cool to like meet them and 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 see how it all works and everything and uh, I was like putting up uh, putting together pictures and stuff for my new show uh, to to talk they loved it they wanted to like see a bit more of it in action and then it wasn't until things started to get really serious where I almost had a series with them that I started getting like cold feet and I was like. <clears throat> really like like warming up to the idea that i'll be like making a proper show of like all these like a team of animators and everything for helping me and everything and i was just like I don't know, it, it all sounds so cool but it's just it's just not like 
I don't know, I started to lose interest in it because I wasn't physically sitting down and drawing it on paint and making it the way I'm, I'm used to. So I was like kind of sad that I was like losing that a bit. And it wasn't until like a week later that I was going to hear that I was going to get the green light or the, it was like a yes or no. I was like, it was a week away till I was going to find out that. And this was like two years in the making and conversing and shit. Mm. Been to America back and forth twice to meet them. And it was all, like all this shit in between. And um, I was like, call my manager and I was like, <clears throat> fuck, I'm starting to get cold feet. I'm really, oh, I think, I don't know if I want to go ahead head with this. And he's like, man, like my manager, he's like my, my really good friend. And he's just like, we're able to talk so normally. And just like, he's like, man, oh, you, you do what you want to do. Like, this is completely up to you and everything. Like, so he's like super cool about it. But I felt bad because like he's done so much for me to get this all lined up and everything like that. So I'm like, fuck, there's a lot of people involved. I don't want to just walk away and let people down that, that are excited for this. But I'm like, I don't know, it just didn't feel like me. Like I just didn't, I, I, I don't know. And yeah, it's just weird when there's other people like like the high up people, um, like sort of telling you what you can and can't do. Even though there wasn't heaps of that, there was definitely vibes of that. And like, um, I don't know, I just, I've never dealt with any of that before. So I was just like, I don't know. It just, I'm just so used to just thinking of an idea, not telling anyone and just fucking doing it and making it. And there, there it is. When this was like so much more planning and preparation to make something where it just felt like, I don't know. It was just different. It was just different. I wasn't yeah, used yeah. to it. And I just, yeah, I didn't get that like satisfaction as I usually would. So I said to him, I said, I think I'm going to tell them that I'm going to walk away. I think I'm going to say, oh, I don't want to do this. I just want to go back to it. Like Spider-Man, like when he gets offered by Iron Man, he's like, you want to be in the Avengers? Here's a fucking sick suit. Here's the Iron Man suit. Yeah. Fucking you're in. And he's like, ah, oh. man, I think I'll, <laughs> I think I'm just going to be the little guy, just like being a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And he made that choice. Like when he realized, when he took a look at the suit, do I really want this? It's, I, I had the exact same fucking thing. Like it was mm -hmm. um, like a typical dream that um, like, you know, that's, that's drilled into us. Like, Oh, you fucking going to Hollywood and fucking making it in America and fucking all that shit. But like, man, I, I don't really want to be famous or, or make it just, huge or whatever. I just want to. You just like, want to swing around, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah I just want to just swing around and help the little guy. Yeah. You know, just be in a friendly neighborhood side of it. Yeah. <laughs> I resonate with that. And like, there was even another Spider-Man moment where I was like, um, I was actually watching Spider-Man too. And you know, when he's um, like Peter Parker, he's like in, in the, he's about to see Mary Jane's show and he sees his two suits in his cupboard. He's got his like formal suit and his Spider-Man suit. And he's looking at both of them like, fuck, like, like he's got two lives. He's got two suits. And there's that song playing over it. It's saying like, tried so hard to be someone that you forgot who you are and i'm like thinking of that going oh man this is really hitting me hard like i love spider-man as yourself like and it's just i don't know it, it really spoke to me i'm just like man like for the past two years i have been kind of imagining i'm someone or going to be someone that i'm like i'm not right now and it's just like this journey that I was like on, like thinking this is all going to go forward. I'm like thinking like that. I don't think that's what I really want. So at last minute I told my manager, I'm going to walk away. He said, that's fine and everything, but like wait to hear what they say, if it's a green light or a no. And um, it actually was a no. They actually came back and said, look, even though we were like conversing for like almost two years, we're probably not going to go with it. Cause it's, I don't know. I can't remember what they said. I think it was just like too Australian or too much swearing in it or, or something <laughs> like it was just, it was just like too Australian, much for Australian an and swearing are synonymous with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> I think also because like the the like um, examples I gave them and shit, like there's just characters just, just talking nonsense. So, so like for a brand new American audience that doesn't have never heard like Australian speak before would just be like, what's this? Go over their heads and then they just won't be able to absorb it. And like it's more of a thing in Australia my, and like New my Zealand friend Philippa couldn't understand the first season of Big Les. But he kept watching. <laughs> He's like, man, I don't understand one word of this, but I, I keep watching. So I think it was something like that. And he's, he's like, like learning like, English. That's like that's like <laughs> final boss, you know, <laughs> English. <laughs> like uh, uh, cute boss music. Bowser's <laughs> like, <laughs> <Houses> Castle. <laughs> Study this. Cause, yeah, because if, yeah, if you can understand Big Les, you're you're a master at English. You can understand. <laughs> You'll be all in English, Australia. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to hear conversations all left and right. But yeah, man, it was like when I heard them. When I was in the bus with Danny, and we were like camping along yeah. along these beaches in New South Wales. And my manager called me, and he's like, "Man, they got back to me, and they actually they're not going to go of it after all. Like you, this is what you wanted. Like you're going to walk mm. away, and that then they." And I was like, I was like. For the first time in two years, weirdly enough, even though I was excited for it and going along this journey and getting so close to like having this all happen, I was as soon as he told me that they they said no anyway, I was like so relieved and so like 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 big bursts of happiness and freedom. I was just like, I'm not locked into anything now. I'm like I'm free to make whatever I want. I'm free to like. Like, I don't have to tell anyone what I'm making. I don't, I don't like, I'm free to just, just make what I want and don't have to run it by anyone. And I was just like, for the first time in ages, I was like, actually really happy and really like, it was just free. And I was like, I was just jumping up and down on the phone and, and me and Danny ran down to the beach and running around. I was like, I'm fucking, I'm probably the first person in the world to like, big celebrating that i got like, rejected from a like a network or something like that <laughs> so i was just like super stoked and like all these opportunities just blowing up in my mind because yeah for the past two years thinking this is the path that i'm on that like it just narrowed it down to this is what i'm doing and now it's just like <clears throat> can go anywhere just yeah, like we were talking and, before, and hey like, you're in a position where way most people want to be you know like a lot of people who are working on those kind of tv shows would kill to be in a position where they have complete freedom yeah and they can just make oh, it man it. and people it was, will love it oh man it was such a good feeling and like and i don't them they were so cool about it as well like they weren't like like they weren't they were like the most normalist guys like i'm like pretty ch like chummy with one of the main dudes that i was talking to he's like like really nice fella like fucking hanging him out like hey oh mate like <laughs> they're just normal fellas but like it was just they're more thinking about their american audience and everything and they just thought oh maybe it just might be, be a bit too much which like i don't care what they say like i'm like what i was saying to my manager i was like i'm so glad that they came back and they they said no anyway because now i won't ever think what would have been what yeah. if i like what if I kept to it and walked away and it could have been such a good opportunity and I walked away from it. It was like closure. So I got, got to the, like got so close that I touched it, felt it and realized uh, it's not for me. And I had to get that close to realize it's not for me. Otherwise I would have always thought what if, or if I never went down that path, I would have always been curious about it and wanted to see if that's a, an opportunity to go down but now that, that i've yeah touched it smelt it it was all right but like i'd rather yeah stick to the <laughs> neighborhood swing and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and and ever since awesome. like for the past five six months of making the new show uh, the what the old school way i do it on paint on a little tablet fucking this big just just at home or, or like in the bus or whatever doing it the way I've done it for the past eight, nine years, I've never had so much fun. Like mm. this time around, I'm like getting so into drawing, even the boring parts. I'm just like, this is great. I'm having such a good time. Like it's the first time I've actually like 
I guess I was taking a little bit for granted before because I was thinking of these other things that I could be doing and I don't know it's just yeah it's been it's been great man and I had to go through that to realize that sadly enough but I guess that's that's how you learn <clears throat> some shit in life you gotta reconsider go the, yeah you don't what's the word um you don't you don't learn what the lesson is until after the test or something like that. Yeah. You always get the test first before the lesson, which is like trippy. It's like Wong, Doctor Strange. It's like maybe you should read the warnings after the spells. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I can't remember what he said. But, but yeah, man, that's yeah. what that's what this this year's about is like is for me anyway, it's like um a fresh start with everything and I can um, get it all back and rolling the way uh, that I'm free to now. And it's, yeah, who knows what can happen. That could still lean towards a network in the future. That's still a possibility. But at the moment, I'm so happy and comfortable just doing it in paint, doing it on YouTube, just fucking old school way. Yeah. And the Aussie fucking bush. Up. Can't be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fucking. Wow. I'm like me and Danny were camping in the bus like up in Queensland like months ago, and I'm still working on what I'm working on, and we're just camping. I'm waking up in the morning, got the Simpsons playing on another computer. I'm just like animating, got my coffee, look out my window, and I see a beach, and I'm like, oh fuck, I'll go walk out the beach for a bit. I'm fucking camping and like at a campsite, and there's fires going on. Like, oh, this is sick go back in the bus and get back to work. And it's like, man, this is what I've been dreaming of doing for like more than six years. Like, you know, when you, you envision something you want to do and then you catch yourself, like, fuck, I'm doing it. This is what I envisioned. It's what I've dreamed and hoped for. And I'm fucking in it. You got to like snap yourself out of it and go, fuck, whoa, I'm, I'm here. Like, fuck, it's possible. Dreams yeah, are so possible to like, yeah, it's easy to take shit for granted. It's easy to away, take but... shit for granted, you know what I mean? Because then, I don't know. Oh, yeah, so easy. You, you get into your own head about it but or, it's... like, compare yourself to what you could be or maybe look at this person Man. at this stage. He's already done this, so maybe I should be doing more. All that kind of stuff. All the same ego mind. Yeah. Dude, comparing, comparing is, yeah. Oh, fucking oath, man. Comparing is, like, the most get this like when i was on the journey of thinking i'm going to get a like i'm getting lined up to do a possible show on a network um like for me legitly and i'm thinking of that like that's that's like what i'm, what I'm focused on at the moment and then i just got the um the million subscribers gold youtube plaque and i got that and it was fucking awesome it was so cool, such an achievement and everything. But like my mind was thinking, okay, that's that cool. But I'm still going to, uh, still going to do this. This is somehow bigger and everything. So mm -hmm. Like I took that for granted. And then <laughs> yeah, as soon as I was having those realizations that like, yeah, as soon as I was having those realizations that like, man, I don't want this. I want, I want back this. I'm like looking at the goal thing, like fucking, I should be like celebrating like this is such a good achievement, but because there's this other thing I'm think I'm meant to be, it's not letting me take this in as much. And it was just like really big slap in the face. Like, man, I, like everything I want or striving for, like it's, it's in front of me. I've already got it. And you got to be, I guess, like reminded that you have that in life. Like it's good to be aware of it all the time, but like, it's also it's also good to forget and then be reminded because that hits hits you so much harder and like emotionally and shit. You're like, fuck, man, this is sick. Like, deepens. Yeah, uh, yeah. We we go through seasons, right? We're seasonal creatures. Yeah. Oh, hun Hundy P, mate. Hundy P. Hundred <laughs> 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 percent. But it's like it's like it's a weird condition of like like comparing and stuff. Like there's a, like think about like a millionaire, a millionaire. We're looking at millionaires like, fuck, that's a fuckload of money. Like, what could you do with a fucking million dollars? That's fucking ridiculous. Like, it's insane. And then 
the millionaire is looking at their billionaire friend and going, fuck, wish I was a billionaire and not stopping to think, fuck, I've got a million dollars come. Fucking go do heaps of shit. But that those same millionaires are looking at billionaires and just going, hmm, must be nice being a billionaire. And those billionaires are looking at trillionaires going, fuck, must be nice being a trillionaire <laughs> instead of being a stinky old billionaire. Oh, uh, where do you go from there? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Oh, Squid Game. That's where they go. Squid, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Squid. <laughs> it does go into dark dark mm. corners of the human mind when you have so much you have too much money like it gets to the point where it doesn't matter how much more you make you've already have everything you've accumulated everything i can't imagine that i'll just give it away so i wouldn't gonna... be able to and then they get into like sick sick shit you know like yeah the exactly epstein, these epstein islands or whatever you know oh, one tiny example dude have you seen squid game i have well, like I reckon that we shit's fucking real. Out of that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, I reckon that shit. Even right. if even if you like, go to like Thailand exactly. and in Southeast Asia, for example, there's like it's you know very widely documented that they have a lot of like sex trafficking and uh, yeah. with kids and stuff that, like that. that like shit. I've seen YouTube channels of this guy. I'm pretty sure it's like an Aussie mm. guy as well. He goes to Thailand pretending to be a, a pedo, and then you know <laughs> trying to find these really? girls and, and then bust them. It's full on. Those are intense. Yeah, I've seen those yeah. vi- those videos are really tough to to look at. Or like, have you seen the one where they catfish pedos and then they record them? Yeah, I've seen. And they full yeah, bust them. And yeah, I've seen videos of that. Just fully <laughs> confront yeah. them. Yeah. What are you doing, man? And you see the whole life. It's, it's, yeah. But even if that shit exists life. everywhere, because that's actually a lot more common than what we think. It's not a, like this rare freak nature occurrence. Mm. This shit happens all the time. So imagine what's underneath the shadows, because there's the shadows, the underworld, and then there's like the shadows within the darkness, right? It goes be even beyond that. Uh, the nameless. That, that's how it's spaceless. Hidden, or, you know, it's, yeah, exactly. The shadows. Exactly. No one wants to think, even right now, talking about it, like, can tell people like they'll be listening yeah, no to knows. it and be like, I don't want to think about that. I don't, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to hear about this. Is because it's it's too dark, and that's how they get away with it. Because no one wants to. No one wants to think there, so that's how they hide. Hide in the shadows. On like hectic shit fucking goes on, but like because it's so fuck so like, uh, what's the word? Sounds um like, like malevolent to. <laughs> yeah that, that your brain just kind of goes nah i don't reckon that's real that's too dark nothing gonna be that dark but like because yeah, most people can. because most people look at the lens of their own experience or so it's like because most people are good people you know what i mean they wouldn't ever go to yeah. a dark psychopathic space where it's like well why, why would even why would someone do that like you asking that question just proves that you're privileged enough that you've never been there you can't even fathom mm. how someone could think in such a perverted way. But once you see it, yeah. you can't un- unsee it. You know what I mean? Like it's there. Yeah. Most people are just lucky that they don't have to see. They don't have to see that part of humanity. But it's mm. ooh, it's a dark it's a dark monster. <laughs> like yeah. in, in the abyss. We live in that yin yang on Earth. Like there's there's dark and light existing all around us. Like life and death and it's all around us. So like the most lightest angelic kind of people are out there and you can see them because they're bright. They're in the light. And that's the most fucking darkest, absolute darkest fucking cunts out there. But then there's those who, mar- then there's those who masquerade in the light as well. So it's like a bit of a mix match. That's, that's what, the, yeah. It's a bit, a bit different with the, you know, we work different in terms of like nature. It's all that's predetermined. It's all working in this integrated way where it's all harmonizing, but the human being, we got like free will and choice and like consciousness, like, but in, in a way that's very different to the rest of nature. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, there is something about humans, which give us the ability to transcend what this is. I don't yeah, know. Right. Or yeah. at least having that awareness yeah. or just, there's something, there's something there. <laughs> and that's where evil yeah. becomes a reality because evil exists through choice, mm. right? Because we have the freedom to choose. 
that's what Free otherwise if we, if we had no choice like nature that's why there is no like evil in nature because it's just it's all part of the thing whereas when, yeah, hum, when see, whereas when whereas that. when humans go to like such a dark place like you know whatever pedophilia or serial killing or we'll just stop it there because we don't have mm. to uh, <laughs> paint the imagination of how dark we can go because <laughs> I keep going <laughs> but there, there is something Hello. like a place in humanity where it's like this is not a natural thing you know it's not like this day or night cycle it's, this is something really dark that we shouldn't we shouldn't go to this place and humans know that deep down yeah. we have a conscience right I like that saying there's this guy uh... Um, I listened to a few times. Um, James Gilliland, he like does his cool UFO stuff, covers a lot of that. Um, I like what he says, he like because there's, there's all those like um real spiritual people out there that are like, oh, love and light and darkness doesn't exist, and and you know, all this sort of stuff. And he says, like, um, to be enlightened is to be in knowledge of all of it, it's to be in knowledge of that the it all exists even the darkest of the dark and the lightest of the light and you look at it as a whole it's like mm -hmm. um this the second new of the new trilogy of the star wars are like what luke skywalker's telling ray he's like close your eyes what do you see she's like I see darkness i see light and life and what's holding that together a force the force is holding it together it's like, <laughs> Fuck yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, you're fucking talking some cool shit. Yeah. And, um, well, that even just yeah, man. that was it's... based on like Hero's Journey, which is based on you know like all all the same old biblical story. You know, we've known this story for the longest time. It's just getting retold in pop culture. <laughs> that fucking what's that thing that you're holding? <laughs> what is it called? Sorry. <laughs> it's a fucking. Waving, waving on yeah, inflatable tube, yeah, 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 that's the one. Waving uh, inflatable tube, man. <laughs> See, I knew in the room, I was just like, oh, fucking hello. <laughs> we'll get there. It's like to leave it in the hallway sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, but, we're, yeah we're, we're in a very kind of uh, it's, interesting, um, interesting point in terms of just being a human being playing in this story. Hold on, you're lagging. You're lagging just now. Oh. oh, yeah, man. It's a bit... Oh, what's the word? Even, <laughs> I was going to say, it's all, it's all up in the air at the moment. Like, um... It is. Like the devil breath is. <laughs> it's all up in the air, circulating around at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fucking interesting. I mean, it's like... I don't know. I, I'm enjoying... Like a part of me is like enjoying seeing all this play out because it's like, fuck, it's cool to see people either um, people like having uh, awakening experiences or they're like starting to question when they've never questioned before and there's um, uh, people standing up who otherwise would not stand up or get off their couch if you know none of this shit was happening. It's, I don't know it's just like it's just cool to see people moving not like physically but mentally everyone's sort of moving give that in a bad way or a good way it's just good to see activity happening because right. then it's better like than the third up something it's true better than what, sorry? At, at it's better than indifference like at least people care yeah yeah even if they're polarized you know what i mean because mm. you don't want to be no, very very yeah. Be hot or cold, but just don't. It's very, do very. It was, what, what was that? I couldn't. What, what, oh, like because people, uh, like you don't want to be indifferent, where you're just like completely unattached in this kind of sociopathic kind of way. Because a lot of people, I feel yeah. like they use that excuse as like they're enlightened or they're spiritual, or whatever. But it's like no, you're actually just being a narcissist mm. and living in your own world, and you don't want to deal with other people's. <laughs> And you can't deal with it. <laughs> yeah. You have it. Yeah, 100%. Because <laughs> it's I like, dealing with the real world. I know? imagine, 
Yeah, I'd imagine well, it can be. Like it can be. It doesn't always have to be, but you know what I mean. People make it hard on themselves. Yeah. I make it hard on myself. I'm sure at times you make it yeah, I, I, unnecessarily I hard on yourself as well. I think everyone. Does. Yeah, I was like, can't like I can can't even imagine uh, how many times you get hit up like because like your your um, the nature of your channel and stuff and all the things that you cover you probably get hit up by so many people that say like, what's your stance on this? And like, where are oh, you? Oh yeah. Um, are you an anti or are you a pro or are you a fucking this? Are you that? Cause I get hit up a lot and people really like, are really keen to hear what like other people are like thinking, what our opinions are, but really like fucking, it doesn't matter, but people are asking anyway. I can only imagine you get hit up a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah but it's like i don't know i always i feel like i always talk about trying to transcend being like opposites and being polarized and all this kind of stuff uh doesn't mean i don't have opinions on certain things because sometimes i am on one side of the fence yeah of course um but at the very least i always try to understand the other side before i make a stance i have to understand both sides before yeah i do that to the best don't go in what's the word yeah you don't go in what's the word? prejudice yeah pre prejudgmental you gotta like yeah because most people choose the side. Coins and then that's how it kind of like how, what all the decisions already made for them yeah and they just go with it or they start judging others like, because they they believe in a different thing you know it's like oh you're in that group yeah i'm in this group <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> And it's like, I just, I just it makes it work. It's sad. Again, it's just like sad to see like that division just spread yeah. in our communities, <laughs> like people fighting yeah. amongst themselves. And if you look at throughout history, oh, yeah. some of the, the best time to, if you want to invade a country is to make them turn on each other. Right. You yeah. Create some sort of a conflict so that people start dividing against themselves and then they're not as strong. you got cracks. That's in what the- fucking... That's what um, what's his name does in Civil War to the Avengers, and Ultron does it as well. So yeah. fucking break them up from the inside, break yeah. up the Avengers from the get them fighting toward. Yeah. If I can get them to just start destroying each other, and now, yeah, Tony I, Stark I have to be America. Like, they, were, they were fighting the same shit, right? One Tony Stark's wanted yeah. governmental control over their decisions, and uh, Captain yeah. America wanted complete freedom, and they both had their um, you know they, had, they both had pros and cons. Hang on, I just, just wait. I think you're on a lag. Are you lagging, or am I lagging? Wait, am internet. I? Am I good? Yeah, you're good. I think oh, I might be. Oh, I see. My internet connection. Let me try, and I'm, I'm going to try just for a moment, so it's, it might lag. Uh, hot spotting to my phone. Isn't that funny? Yeah, this is Australia. It's like it's like a first world country, and we got like our internet here. I've gone to Thailand, and it's like better internet. At a cafe Shocking. Than, at my own house. Shocking compared. <laughs> shocking, shocking compared. Like overseas, you just free Wi Fi is fucking everywhere somehow. And you just like faster. Your Wi Fi on the streets fucking faster than your own, yeah, our internet at home. So, like, G to G. That's good, why I'm good to go. Yeah, yeah, good to go. G to G, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody. But yeah, fucking it. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, that that whole division thing, like I, I will have to admit, I I have like poked the bear just a little bit, just for fun, <laughs> just for fun. I couldn't help myself, like yeah. just some of the silly things that's going on. I couldn't couldn't help but like have a little laugh on both sides, though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a laugh on on both sides, but like, yeah, it's it it is the whole thing is just a reality TV show for me at the moment, and it's just I don't know. There's a lot of, a lot of, yeah, question. I won't go into it now, but like, holy fuck. There's a lot of funny shit out there. <laughs> I guess just got to brave through the storm, I guess, and wait until yeah. eventually people are going to stop giving a shit. Yeah, they already are. They already yeah. stopped giving a shit. Yeah, it's just like, ah, fuck it. I've got COVID, mate. How is it? Like, ah, all right, I'm going to go mow my lawn. <laughs> until, like, the next, until the next crisis or whatever. Yeah. Big boot. Last year, yeah, fucking everyone, yeah, people are just starting to go, oh, this is a fucking joke and shit like that. 
not particularly to the the virus when I say that because I know there's people listening that'll be like fucking take this shit seriously I am I know there's a sickness I know it's real I know all that sort of shit I just think the restrictions are ridiculous there's particularly the restrictions in Australia are absolutely fucking ridiculous like I live on the in the town like my hometown is the one that has the border across it and Mm. half the town can't fucking travel even though the other state has fucking heaps of COVID cases. They're still not opening the border because they're trying to keep out the cases. Obviously it didn't work, but they keep the border up. Like, and these restrictions, especially with you guys in Melbourne, like worst, like longest lockdowns in the world and shit. And yet, has it helped? Fuck no. Well, we just got still, the biggest surge in, our, in history. So it was just yeah. like delaying the inevitable, I guess. In, on some yeah, I suppose. but on then, some level but then, but then you could say that because we waited now because of omicron which is a less intense variant you know like yeah it'd be very different if you got it at the first wave because even the first omicron, one was I've, I've been through it now and it's like it's you know it's not it's not a cakewalk and if the first variant or even delta was meant to be more intense then yeah okay yeah, that's a reason to be... But it should be more like, education and people's willing to do it. it. I think it's just more the mandate and what that does psychologically. Like, people are going to want to yeah. fight back just for you forcing yeah. people to do something. Yeah, um, they, like, make you... Treat everyone as people. Like, in Japan, no one... There was no... Like, for the longest time, there weren't, like, strict mandates, but everyone wore a mask. They did the thing because that's... Just yeah, they did the right thing. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it the just be common people to do the right thing, and yeah, I guess in one case you could be like, yeah, but we're not like this. But then if you treat them like that, then you're just going to recreate that reality, and then I don't know. Mm. Who knows? That's what I struck. Like that's what I'm laughing at, and like just disagreeing with is just the way. Fair enough. It's a new thing. Our like generations that haven't like fucking dealt with this before, so like. Obviously, it just feels like no one really knows what to do. So it's like kind of like a little panic or whatever. But just like, I don't know. It, a lot of it is just really silly. And like, like at least to my point of view, it probably makes so much sense if it was explained better. But like, I don't know. From afar, looking at it from afar, I just can't help. I just <laughs> I can't help. But just see this play out and then to like see people still hoarding toilet paper and, and that kind of shit. It's like, shouldn't we be helping each other out instead of being every man for himself? Like, haven't we oh, learned? Yeah. The tests, like, it was the same thing with the tests. I went to like three different pharmacies, yeah. supermarkets and, you know, no, no. You're saying, yeah, I, you're saying you really needed to be, to be tested, but I feel like a lot of people would have hoarded them for sure. Like, yeah, oh, 100%. Or being just too overly cautious without actually thinking like, hey, someone might actually need this and then being yeah. tested is actually very important for them to know right now. Otherwise, yeah. shit could hit the fan and you've got like 50 boxes in your pantry. Yeah. Come on, mate. Just, I don't even know if this person exists, but I'm sure for sh- someone did that. <laughs> just bought like... Oh, yeah, fucking hell. And hoarded. Come on. <laughs> They're out there. And you, yeah, you can see them sometimes. <laughs> like... What, what, what do they do? <laughs> what, no, it's fucking what, what, what do these no, people it's hang out? Looking... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, who knows, man? Like, it's just like all this fear and stuff. Obviously, people are going to freak out. People are going to like push each other out the way. Like, fuck, that's my fucking toilet roll. Like, I better get 10 of these and fuck you's all and shit like that. That's, that's, just, that's just bound to happen in any population. Like, like same as the schoolyard, there's like, like heaps, there's always the same groups of people. There's always the, the the fuckwits that like to to mingle when they're a little small group and they find each other. And it's, it's just like life. There's fuckwits around like everywhere. But there's mm. also good people, there's mutual people. There's yeah, it's, it's all all of it. And people and, um, at different stages of their journey as well, right? So some yeah, exactly. And it all bad right now could go on a beautiful journey and do great things. Yeah, and we'll be I don't know. Who's, who's to say if it will be different without that or if that's like a system that's like organically put in place just like the natural world like you've got predators and prey and you've got plants and all this sort of shit and it all works together even though 
as I was saying before, it's so brutal when we look at nature, we see a spider literally wrapping up its fucking prey that's still alive and it's going to fucking slowly yeah. kill it in the most horrendous. horrific way. We like go through and grow in, in, in animals or insects' brains and they just sprout and then they're f- fucking f- start. Yeah, it's fucked up. Their fruits start budding through the eyeballs and oh man, brutal. That is, that's that that's a zombie virus. How is that mean. not a fucking? <laughs> Wasn't there some virus like that? Like it was a fungus that worked on that infected ants, and after they die, the they kind of they get yeah they get kind of yeah like reanimated. That's what the whole Last of Us thing was based on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking. So nature's nature's nature. fucking brutal. But when we when we look at it from afar, we're like. It's a big organic system. It works. It, it's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to, like, that's how it all recycles itself. It's the same with humans. Like, you've got to have good, bad people. You've got to have people who make mistakes, people that do good things and bad things. Is because it's, it's, I don't know. I fucking, I don't know. I don't know what we are. What, what are we? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> I fucking really have no idea. But we're, we're, part, it's somehow, like we're part wretched and part divine, you know, because it's not, I don't think it's a hundred percent divinity where like we're all God and perfect as we are. Cause we have the capacity yeah. to do some really atrocious shit. Cause we're like, we're, it's the paradox, right? Cause we're like, we're an animal. So we have that wretched part of ourselves that just wants to be a slave to our pleasures and greed and power and just <laughs> sex and fucking stuff our faces and just fucking masturbate and you know what I mean? Like that. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> jack off, mate. Yeah. Bloody feed into that feed into that primal energy. But then there's also the other mm. part of you, like the conscience who wants to do who wants to tra- who can transcend. And that's what really separates us from the animals. It's order, rules. We have a choice to break out. We have a choice. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Well, so I guess like, that's like that's it's like the paradox, right, of the human being. <laughs> We're like wretched. It's but... like, isn't that like also? I uh, can play into like the whole evolution thing. Like everything's just built to to get better and to be stronger and to. So I love the moth metaphor. Like it, that's in Lost and everything. How like fucking boring old slug fucking caterpillar thing just decides to go fuck this make itself a cocoon literally constricts itself and and limits itself and fucking deteriorates in this cocoon and it built itself only for it to try get stronger and stronger in there so it one day break out of what it put itself through it becomes a butterfly or a moth or whatever and it's like um it's like Cell being in that me. machine in Dragon Ball, you know, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mating and then <laughs> transforming. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's that's where we're at. In um, you know, like I remember saying it before, but like maybe that's where we're at with this whole humans. We're, we're just going along this this path, sort of blindly, just going wherever, and just I don't know what's going on, and all this shaking up and division and everything left and right there's division in fucking here and there and what you name it there's a fucking opposite opposite mm-hmm. viewpoint on it or something like that it's just absolutely scattered itself what if right now we're we're like building that cocoon to like really just compress ourselves and like when we have this desire to move and everything's like ah first we're going to really shake up ourselves and and put ourselves on pause and just really just self-reflect on ourselves. Like everyone's being kept in quarantine and everything and just sitting there on the end of their bed. Fucking what am I doing in life and everything like that? Taking, taking time to, you know, to grow inwardly to one day we'll be able to break out what we're literally all collectively creating for ourselves. And when we do that, we'll be strong enough to, and then we can fly like little butterflies and fucking evolve and be all pretty and be new. And I don't know. Hopefully, I, I'm I'm optimistic, so I, I, hope I so. do have a lot of hope for humans. I do have a lot of like, like I believe in a lot of people. Like like how I was saying yeah. though, those those annoying annoying young fellas that were disrupting my Spider Man first Spider Man viewing. <laughs> but like, but I like, I have hope for them. Like I, I believe that like they'll be right. Like as much as they annoy me and everyone in the whole fucking cinema, they. I believe in them. I believe that they'll look back on that time and go, I was a bit of a fuckwit, 
ruining Spider-Man. I'm I'm not gonna be a fuckwit for the rest of my life and mm. turns them into a good person. So like when That's I see beautiful. people being silly or like just being um general assholes during this time and everyone being asshole to each other, I can't help but like be annoyed when I see that. But at the same time I like I'm I'm annoyed because I have so much uh belief in in people that it's just like stop like you can be so much better or something like that like i don't know and i just yeah i really do have um uh high like high intentions for for everyone i reckon a human potential yeah 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 Yeah. all right we'll get we've been through worse we've been through worse we've been through worse oh fucking earth and here we all are but like no, nothing's perfect and it's not supposed to be i don't think because yeah how would you how would you grow yeah you know, like muscle you gotta when you work out you gotta literally tear your muscle for it to grow back mm-hmm. to be stronger like it's literally in everything so fucking the moth was right mate the <laughs> moth and the and the slug was fucking right <laughs> i don't know not too many of these mate i'm just start talking shit now <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness how long will we be gone for i don't know actually. time man time for me right now is just like <laughs> i feel like i'm in the 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 time chamber what is it called uh in dragon ball that fucking white yeah yeah very trains yeah the hy- hydro what was this time or whatever something <laughs> isn't that also called a pod as well like some sort of pod Oh, nah, nah. That's something else. I remember you used to have the action figure of that when I was little. I used to have that. Oh, really? Thing that, yeah, it had like a mini little figurine of of um Vegeta you can put in there and shit. But fuck, I wish I can find find these little things, these little old action figures that I used to have. Do you do love you action figures? Do you still watch? Uh, are you into anime? And Man, are you um, inspired by anime? I'm like I'm into it. I love it, but I've just I've never like had the time, or like I never give myself the time to watch it because I'm always watching something else. So I like I'm one of those people that loves it and respects it and thinks it's so fucking sick, but never watches it. Yeah. But yeah. I'm always being shown shown it. I'm like my mates give me it on my hard drive, like for um uh to watch and everything. But I just I never I don't know for some reason I don't watch cartoons other than the Simpson Simpsons. I just chuck the Simpsons on for a background thing, but I've never like I can't watch other cartoons for some reason. It's a Simpsons, weird thing. Man. Simpsons is always try, good. Like there yeah, is, I try to watch there is the truth <laughs> and <laughs> the truth. Smithers, Smithers, Mister Burns. <laughs> Classic. It was so weird, man. Class. Me, me and Danny were camping and we met up with these this young couple. I'm pretty sure we told you. And um they were like about 20 years old, 20 and 19. And me and Danny did a Simpsons quote. And we're me and Danny are 27. So we're seven years older than these guys. And um so when we were like 10 years old, they would have been three, like still babies. And we're like doing Simpsons quotes and everything, and they just didn't really get it. And we're just like, you know, the, the Simpsons. Like, oh, you guys like the Simpsons? Like, yeah. <laughs> didn't we all, we all watch the kids? Like, we, oh, we didn't really watch it as kids. Like, we watched other like other shit. Like, this was after when the Simpsons was on at like six o'clock every night and shit. So they grew up in a like a bit of a time bracket. So we're just like, first time realizing, fuck, they didn't grow up watching the Simpsons. Like, kids today aren't growing up watching the Simpsons. That's how we learn how the world works. That's, That's so. All right. Simpsons raised up. Simpsons definitely raised. <laughs> yeah. <up>. Wow. <laughs> Am I so out of touch? <laughs> no, it's the children that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's the children that are wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In this case, it is. <laughs> but they don't. Yeah, yeah. They used to be yeah. like counterculture. You know what I mean? Like they represented everything mm. that was like. like they were like a wrench in this whole pop culture thing. Like no one ever made a show about like this dysfunctional family before making fun of presidents and American culture and, you know, yeah. 
what did what one of the i think it was george bush or something or one of the presidents is like we should be a lot more like you know whatever family and a lot less like the simpsons like <laughs> people hated on it man yeah <laughs> just made fun of everything that was sacred you know but yeah. then over time simpsons became what they made fun of you know they became yeah. part of the institution bought from yeah after season 10 or 11 or something like that i remember simpsons lost me and i just like i've only got the 10 first 10 seasons on well, my hard drive yeah. to watch because like anything Matt after Groening, that. he left after the eighth season really i did all the like original writers or at least the main writers you know the golden yeah. years writers yeah they all left yeah after season eight and then from then on it started going down. like it still had a couple good seasons with some really gold episodes but overall the quality started going yeah. down down because before yeah, it was, it was like 10 out of 10 was... every episode was a was a is iconic you know what i mean <laughs> yeah this is like the first time them doing it and they can't re they can't keep repeating these things so it's like naturally it just yeah changes over time like but like i watched a new one of the new simpsons not too long ago, like one of the, it was like season 20 or something like that. And I was just like watching it. Like <laughs> it's all like newly animated and it's like fully digital. And like, I'm like, I don't even know. Brain can't pick it up. I'm like, this is family guy. This, this I'm watching is family. family. <laughs> oh, like no. this is so like, a, I don't know. It was just, it's definitely changed, but the characters are still there, but it was just like, I don't know. The soul is not there anymore. Right. Yeah, it's like a new soul. It's like a different soul yeah. for someone else. And it's like weird to think that there's probably kids out there growing up now watching the new Simpsons, growing up on the new Simpsons. Ugh. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> May God have mercy on us all. <laughs> Good God. But then again, that generation will grow up and they'll look at kids when they're old and they'll be like, these kids don't know like, what they're missing out of. We grew up with the new Simpsons and all this fucking sick. <laughs> so it's just yeah. like older generations look at us now and just go, them and their bloody um, fucking listening to that hor horrible music, that fucking <laughs> devil's music. The devil's uh, music. <laughs> it's a cycle. <laughs> do, you, do you feel do you start feeling that you're getting old <laughs> when you start yeah. <laughs> you just start yeah. hating the new shit that the ge new generations are into it's like oh man no, but, but it. it's like but it's just the way i feel i don't know what to say about it same with like uh yeah. i still do appreciate like lo-fi for example i feel like that's something that i really love and that's something that's quite new in music anyway but i'm not yeah. into like trap for me is like I can't like my, this is my face when I think oh. about it like ah oh, nah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff it doesn't resonate there, it stuff. doesn't resonate with my frequencies yeah yeah same and but lot, like then again the stuff yeah but then you ask someone else like they'll they'll resonate with a complete opposite to what you'd resonate to like like I don't know it's a I can't handle country music but I love <laughs> old school like real old school 50 style like country like with the fiddle like rah, 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 rah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Can not, not so much that it's like um yeah. like uh i got spurs that jingle 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 <laughs> like that all that sort of music I, I love it for some reason like that the, black and white like the folky the folky kind yeah. of traveling Yippee, yeah, like, like uh, yeah I love it. So I mean, you love you love Red Dead Redemption music. So you, that's just oh man, I love the Red Dead Redemption. Well, I love I love soundtrack. I, yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love it. It's just no words. It's just ambient. It's just dum, 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 dum. I sit by a fucking river and just play it on my phone. Like, mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gotta go up them hills. <laughs> oh, I've been chasing us all the west, chasing us over the mountains. Just become Arthur. What's his name? What's his name? Arthur. Uh, Arthur son. Uh, Arthur Morgan. Arthur, Mo <laughs> Arthur Morgan. It all comes back to you. <laughs> the first one. Um, uh, John. My name's John Marston. Coming <laughs> to capture and kill Bill Williamson. <laughs> Bill, I've come for you. 
have you ever thought about doing Classic. an american like a cowboy character in big les universe <laughs> yeah i've actually got a character that i need to do an american accent <laughs> or in this news in this show that i'm making um there's this one one-off character he's like a um he's like a general sort of fella so i've got to think of think, try getting into it like a voice for um yeah for him because i don't really do american accents at all um unless i'm quoting another character but, <laughs> but normally i couldn't uh, for some reason i can't pretty good. I, I think it's pretty good i don't know <laughs> well, thank you. i'm like i'm more like a mimicker so like i can't on the spot sort of do an american accent someone told me but i can mimic an okay. american character but you can use yeah. that as a base i'm sure you could figure it out oh yeah yeah fucking you right. mix, but just change the pitch a bit i guess but just try to yeah. get that cadence and rhythm and carry that over well for the first one of the first um like characters that i like learned to mimic when when my voice finally cracked in high school and i was able to do like um i guess like adult sounding voices finally like when i was just a kid and i wanted to mimic characters and when i was actually yeah my voice broke i was able my the first character i learned how to mimic was the joker Heath ledger's joker and then i like started to learn all these like all these quotes and everything and then um i went from that to like some other character i can't remember bane from batman i used to fucking do him as well and uh, <laughs> number of other random things i just do some quotes and i just like try get good at doing different voices and all of a sudden Davy I Jones. Hear... <laughs> yeah i can't do him very good but like <laughs> uh, but yeah Tom, I feel I like that know. one makes you laugh the most <laughs> so i love Davy jones so much he's yeah. so funny and what would prompt such an act of reality <laughs> <laughs> just he's like yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the same time. <laughs> what, if, what if I was to negotiate a price? Price. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> what does that mean, so? nice. I am the sea. <laughs> so much. He cracks me up. I, I hope we see him again. <laughs> but yeah, it's he, fun to like to try mimic because like I really want to get fluent at a Scottish accent. That's uh, like really hard because I, I I always when I was young I used to always watch um Billy Connolly stand up and everything like that and I just wanted to like be able to tell these same jokes to my friends but in his accent it was always so hard because he's just oh, so like thick man so. yeah. <laughs> but like I'm getting there, starting to get there because I need to do more scottish accents for like warning guy and shit but um yeah davy jones holy shit me, <laughs> me and tomo as you've seen we just every time we see each other we just do davy jones quotes to each other <laughs> what's this <laughs> five lashes to be old i think it is <laughs> yeah because oh, you guys God. were just constantly doing those impressions as well, like just wandering the streets of Melbourne after like drinking <laughs> a brewery. And I'm like looking yeah. for my car, I think. Oh, I don't even remember. Looky here, boys. A lost bird. A lost bird that they all learned how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> this wouldn't stop. <laughs> It'd be It'll such be on a the hard accent to understand if you if you weren't very good with English. Yeah, oh, yeah. It like, took me a while to read so the subtitles for some of the shit you were saying. Was Grant's so Keeper's like, Willie your foundation for the Scottish accent? <laughs> a little bit, actually. He, yeah, he was definitely part of that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> There's no such thing as Scotland, eh? What? <laughs> Yeah, yours, yeah. Miss Skinner. Yeah, yours, yeah. Miss. <laughs> He's like, saw you were back, son. Aye. And I suppose you'll be leaving soon. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk off. Uh, oh, the thousands kids probably wouldn't get that. Well, they might actually. Who knows? <laughs> oh, yeah, I reckon. I feel like most people have seen Simpsons at this stage, unless you're like new, new generation. Oh, who knows? I, yeah. I don't even know. I have no idea. I'm just talking out of my ass. I have no idea. 
I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is on TV normally right now. I don't yeah. know. I oh, think no, really watching right. Netflix at this like day. T- TV's like non-existent now. It's all fucking yeah. Netflix and shit. Yeah. And online. Like, I remember me and my brother were saying, like, how much we've, like, progressed from when we were younger. Like, we went from VCRs to, like, taping the taping shows and shit, and then we went to DVDs. It was like, oh, my God, the DVD. It's fucking mind-blowing technology and a flat-screen TV. It's just fucking we're here in the future. Then it went from transferring movies onto USB from your friends in school and you got movies on your hard drive and shit, and that was the new thing. Now it's in the fucking air. Now you can just, oh, Netflix, just take it down in the fucking air and put it in your TV and there it is. You just pull it. Dude, even this, this is wireless. Crazy. This is just a, a console. No is it? Yeah, and like with, uh, blows my mind. Yeah. And then you got like two of these controllers. Man, I'm going to have a go at that. I haven't been. It's a cool experience, but then after after a week, I'm like, I need to get out. And then I went to nature. <laughs> yeah. and like, like, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm very. I've always been curious with new technology. I've always been that guy. Like I would always yeah. have, like the Nintendo the first day, the Game Boy Color, like know all sure. the news on the latest shit, what's gonna come out. And I'm just this yeah. is like that uh, next phase of that video game leap. This is like the pong basically yeah. of like that next. It's like the last time we had this big of a leap in the quality of our gaming experience has been from 2d to 3d like that big, mm. that big jump was like oh okay there's a whole different access this changes everything you know <laughs> like especially like with super mario 64 and they absolutely dominated they dominated 2d platforming and 3d platforming that's like wow and then now there's I mean, like that's... and vr basically is that next next level and yeah, it's, that's it is pretty mind blowing. I've only experienced it a little bit. I'm really curious to see like what playing an actual games like. I've only done like just the there's really a boxing. I, there's even like a boxing one, for example. And that'll be cool. Intense. No, but it's like super. I can't even do more than one match because it's like you're you're absolutely destroyed, man. Um, yeah, really. By going oh yeah, kind of like duck and dodging and well, dipping. Like it's not super heavy, but it does have it does have weight. And when you're really tired by the end, you got to like defend your face, but you're like so exhausted. Where you're just like you're struggling just to keep your your hands up, and you're still <laughs> trying to knock this guy out. You know, that's so. It, I can see how in some ways it can be used uh, for for good. Like there's these immersive experiences which show you the inside of a inside of the mind of a man with schizophrenia, and it kind of goes yeah. through life story yeah. and then you transport through his life journey and it's like super cool visuals and storytelling and it kind of gives you so i think like for that and it's i've got a 360 camera right so now i'm like wait my whole world has just opened up and maybe this is something that i can utilize because i've got a 360 camera so i can film now i've got a vr headset so i can actually experience that create create my own experiences because there's even like uh like meditation apps or like uh apps where you can like just travel to different parts of the world or i've tried like going seeing a concert for example so instead of seeing in a 2d space you're actually in it and you can see see ambience and you see the lights and you can look at whoever you want to look at um yes so I i can see like there's definitely a lot of cool utilities but then there's also you know the dark (laughs) <laughs> the dark side uh, yeah like as if anything, you know, yeah different. i don't want to give any ideas because i have a very imaginative mind but <laughs> <laughs> but it is cool like even in resident evil for example like because usually when you reload a weapon you just press a your whole life but now yeah you've got to go to your hip you know fill the magazine cool. then reload it and it feels real because like your brain again it's like and i'm oh, and there's, like cool. gun um attachments that you can buy and all that kind of stuff so this is just the beginning oh. by the end of it it's all going to be like this omnidirectional platform with fucking uh pressure suits where you can feel That's like blows or whatever they're already doing it with the glove the, there's already they're already working on it it's pretty like prototype yeah. but it's got like you can shake someone else's hand and then the, <laughs> there'll be like different pressures <laughs> that will make you think that you're 
shaking someone's hand you, or picking up things. You've you've seen Ready Player One. Hey? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's when I put this. That that was my first thing. This is like, oh, this is Ready Player One. This is the Matrix. This is New World uh, Order. This is <laughs> whatever you want to. This is it. That's pretty trippy to think of that movie because that movie is set in the future. And they don't really talk about much of what happened, but like it's like the um, post uh, civil unrest, and everything was just like fucked, and everyone's just like the world's all fucked, and we're just sort of getting back to it now. May as well just fucking live in our virtual headset. Well, this is when this got super popular ever since the pandemic. Whoa, that's when it really (laughs) all that VR technology and yeah. They never really talk about what the um unless they do and I wasn't listening but like in the movie they they just fall the sun in the future and and all this shit happened and and um they're trying to get over it and and society's just fucked so everyone everyone's just on their v- virtual reality and they're trying to that's where they're living because the real world's so just hard to bear where they're just like fuck this let's just go be let's go hang out with um Superman and shit in 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 the um oasis oh yeah and the 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 porn that's going to be like a whole nother level of a <laughs> yeah I'm telling That'll be interesting. <laughs> it'll be like um that future armor episode where they plug themselves into the internet and they're yep. flying around and they're fucking exactly. oh my god that is that cool it'll be that yeah. And then, yeah and then they'll i'm sure there'll be another version where it'll be like augmented reality or like because already mm coming out with the glasses eventually it'd probably be like a chip or something it was they did a futurama episode actually it was like the new iphone but it was like an eye eye chip or whatever and you plug it in into your eyeball and then that takes over and then you have like this augmented reality so like you're walking around the real world but it's got all the you know all these different like iron man yeah exactly exactly Exactly. wow that's true if we're going to be Iron Man, we are Iron yeah. Man. I am Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, whether to be excited for it or, like, kind of nervous about it. Cause I guess, like, be nervous because it's un- unexplored territory, but, like... Yeah, it's better to be more cautious. Like, in- enjoy it, but... I don't know. Cautious. It's new. It's I'd brand be, new. I'd be more cautious, yeah. especially for, like, new generation and kids getting into it, like... Playing this, as awesome as it is, I'm like, I would not let my kid have one of these. No way. Yeah. Until you're like at a certain age and your brain's developed. Just go out and be- go out in real life. Yeah. Yeah. There's still, <laughs> something that it can, there's still something that it can never really capture, like that real life quality. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're t- yeah. I mean, real- I'm sure, like, I'm sure you could real- make this synthesized real- version of it, like put a fan on or something. And they give, they can simulate wind, but it's still not going to have the same essence of an actual wind out in nature, going, going through to the beach, feeling the yeah. fucking wind in the ocean. I was I was laughing before, and you were like, play playing it, and you were saying to yourself, like, man, I, I'm I'm enjoying this. I got to get out. <laughs> I imagine you change the game to Forest Walkies. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's better. Uh, pretty sure Sheldon does that shit in in Big Bang theories. Oh, butterfly and. No, nah, I can't. I can't play it for too long. Like it is, like I said, I, 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 that, that childlike in me. Like I'm curious and it's fun, but yeah, maybe after thirty minutes, I'm like, all right, I'm done. I need to go. I feel, I feel like it would give me a headache. Like I would just. If I'm kids, and I've been online because I wanted to test how it is. Like this VR chat, we that is like the metaverse, and you can go into these worlds where anyone can create whatever they want, and you can enter their worlds, and you can do whatever you want. But it's all kids. It's all kids because, of course, kids are always the forefront of technology. It always has been that way. Mm. When I was into video games, the vast majority of people who were into video games were kids. Yeah. But only only now, crazy. because since we've gotten older, obviously, there's a huge, there's a lot of, it's normal for a 30 year old to like video games. And it's not <laughs> super weird. I'll be like, I can't. Like, no. <laughs> Fuck, I can't wait till our generation's like actually old, like actually like gray hair. <laughs> Should we give fucking Halo a go? <laughs> yeah. Let's get it going, gun. Fucking like the old days. Fuck yeah, gun. Fucking... Just white hair, like a fucking Saruman looking old guy. <laughs> like, you're so good at it. Like, you're really good at it. Like, when usually, yeah. like, old people we know would just be like, what am I doing? What am I 
what am I pressing? What, what's going on? Where am I? Who am I? What is this? <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, can't. Let's fucking go. Oh, fucking, oh, I should have got that. Like, can't. You, got, you fucking beat me 12 times. Like, mm. And like, grandkids would just be like, fucking hell, how are you so good at this? Like, fucking, you have no idea. You can't. Yeah, the, <laughs> the grandpas would destroy the young generation at games. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the I guess it's like that movie, um, uh, Pixels. Is that what it's called? Pixels. Yeah, I've heard. I, have, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it's pretty much the same kind of. But now there's going like to be like. Was on but there, there is like esport type games now, like uh, what I mean, like yeah. VR esports, where it's like this yeah, weird tennis. kind of invented sport where you like you throw a frisbee and you have jetpacks and you fly and you can punch people in the face or you can block. <laughs> <laughs> something like it's like this full-on like i don't know this weird mix of frisbee football and everything. like in everything yeah exactly but it's like this online arena <laughs> and it's like really cool it's like ready like ready player one shit you know but like i said a lot of it's a lot of it's uh most of it's kids i need to find more ad- adults or or maybe not maybe just have that as a good excuse to leave it and live real life yeah i think that's probably that's the wise decision but i would like to utilize this like i said to for my own video making i think there's something cool there uh and because it's still ahead of the curve you know like vr will be that next like you know how everyone has a tv set or everyone has a smartphone yeah Yeah, vr everyone will have vr that's just it's already done done. (laughs) don't you understand you can't stop this (laughs) <laughs> you just gotta ride the wave yeah. cannot be to river into submission you can only surrender to its current use the power as your own <laughs> Doctor Strange um, yeah it'll be sick for you to make videos like that because like like what I've seen with a lot of your um, viewers they love seeing the adventure videos because they they feel like they're on the adventure with you and they're like yeah. fuck it fuck you're taking us for a walk um, out to see these cool sites when like they might be in a point in their life where they they simply can't or they're like maybe in these cases they're locked down for fucking two weeks or whatever and they can't leave the house yeah it's yeah. something to and these so like you make videos like, um, like this mountain that i'm like going mining and like sorry sorry go yeah ahead. yeah i was just gonna say like with your virtual reality thing if you if you brought around a 3d uh, 360 camera you can be like put on your headset i'll take you on a fucking little journey here's some cool nature sounds and just come for a walk with me make sure to do this when you're when you when you when you have the chance like this is like a this is the shit that you're missing out on or like what you should be yeah saying exactly or give it a te- it's like a teaser trailer for the real thing it's like <laughs> yeah, it's yeah like, if you can't yeah. come out here all right cool you can experience it virtually to a certain degree it's still going to be cool like, from um, your perspective since you've never been here before but come it's kind of like yeah it's kind of <laughs> deeply to think that we're already thinking of tutorial videos to <laughs> like review what it's like to be out in nature <laughs> you've got to experience it through virtual reality first yeah we're gonna do it we're, we're gonna do it together jared we're, we're doing <laughs> we're, we're talking about it now i reckon with the, like all right welcome this is uh you know mount warning <laughs> yeah. you know whatever Hear that? that's a bird like that's a real bird like an actual <laughs> organic bird hear that like it's like there's <laughs> no sound systems out here or, anything, or no, nothing and then then we might come to the realization where wait a minute this is organic nature to us but really we're seeing through the fabrications of it and realizing that we are in some sort of other computer graphical grid or some sort of matrix but it's also a game within itself dear god and then we break out of that and then <laughs> we find out what we're doing. <laughs> just gets deeper and deeper and deeper <laughs> Who knows? Oh, uh, second time. That's nice. Oh, yeah. oh yes. I'm just stumbling, man. Right. <laughs> Usually, when I try to get the joint in my mouth, I always it always fall falls out. But for some reason, it did it three times in a row. <laughs> that time, because I've made that happen. This is by far the most high I've gotten on a podcast before. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yes. Uh, I can't smoke any. I would, but I'm, I'm already pretty blazed because I, I haven't smoked actual... I was, I was just following you. I thought you were going to light it. I'm just following your lead. I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just 
Jack gonna give me meow. I can't be can't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already pretty biased because I I haven't I haven't smoked um um like proper bud in a while. I've been smoking like this leafy shit that's not so strong, but it's just like oh, yeah, something. Yeah. I, I've but, actually um, I've been mixing that, so it's been like fifty fifty. I put in that leaf yeah. with the bud just to kind of yeah yeah uh, yeah. <laughs> Space it out, <laughs> not make it too, 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 too potent, you know? That's how I first started smoking weed, just smoking leaf and like working my way up baby steps by adding a bit of bud to the leaf and like just to the point where it just replaced the leaf and was just all bud and I had to like train myself to get up there. And um, every, every night when I first started properly like smoking by myself, I'd, I, ha I hadn't watched any of the Harry Potters up until this point, 2013. So I started... I, we roll two joints, two leaf joints, and watch a Harry Potter movie every night. And um, by the by the end of my Harry Potter marathon, I was a stoner and never looked back. <laughs> Harry Potter turned you into a stoner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I haven't watched them, so I was like, "This is perfect. It's magic. It's a good, ha like you know, fun kind of movie and and shit like that." So still goblet of fire. Oh, then it turns dark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck yeah. Oh, it's, fucking, shit. it's fucking sick. So I'm glad I waited that long to watch all the Harry Potters, especially uh, especially all together. And um, yeah, that's how I became a stoner. <laughs> it actually used to like, smoking used to give me so much anxiety, but I knew that I, I hadn't felt that actual nice stoned feeling yet. So I was like, I really wanted to feel that and, and see what that was about. But when I was first smoking it, my body wouldn't let me. It was like my heart was beating real hard. I was sweating and fighting it instead of like accepting it. And um, it was a really big thing where my heart would just, just start beating out of my chest where I'd become really aware of my heart. I'd be like, oh, oh, holy fuck, just yeah. hearing it thump. Until one day, this is how I got over it. One day, one night I was watching um, a movie because I watched, watched movies because I, I felt like I was... Um, being, being a human experiment into like experimenting with weed and how my body reacts to it in different doses and stuff. Um, so when it was like, yeah, for giving me heart palpitations, I channeled that energy to think that big vibrating pumping in my chest was uh, the Iron Man arc reactor. <laughs> you know, when, you know, because I was watching Iron Man 2, I was, like, I was watching Iron Man 2, you know, like he makes the, the new arc reactor, the triangle one. And um, in his basement, and it's he plugs it in, and he's like, "Oh yeah, like oh, this feels fucking good, like fuck yeah, this is sick." I channeled my, uh, I like changed my uh, anxiety, heart pressure feeling over my chest from being stoned to pretending I had that arc reactor, and it was just glowing. And then I, like that feeling just turned into like a big vibration of like love and happy, and just like, "Oh, this feels so good." It's just, it's all in your mind. You can change it just like that. And ever since it, it was, it's just been, yeah, I mean, it's just been awesome to me. And now it's just like, I guess I'm, I smoke fucking all the time. So it's just normal to me now. Like I'll give a mate a puff and they just need one puff and they're fucked. I'll just need like smoke a joint, like a cigarette, like a cigarette sometimes and just with your coffee. Yeah. Unless just got some weak stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I, I got through my way, my, my cycles, I guess. <sighs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I'm like, like, yeah, right, like right now it's kind of like, like, of course, yeah. Smoking now, especially since the devil's breath, but even during this <laughs> isolation, you know, kind of just makes it, yeah. you know, just hanging out makes the time go a bit easier. Yeah, man. Nice and chill. You're relaxing anyway. Yeah. I may as well. Getting prepared for that next. Because, I, yeah, man, I just want to... I've been wanting to get out of this place for a long time. Just to do something like yeah. a great... You know what I mean? Like a cool adventure and explore something and make something special. That's, you know... I don't know. Nah, it's all to come. 100%, yeah, exactly. man. It's like... You're in that cocoon. You're in that cocoon right now and your, your butterfly wings are going to fucking spread and you'll be fucking... I'm just impatient. It's like, yeah, but I want to fly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but wait. <laughs> you've, you've, Jarvis. You've... <laughs> Sometimes you got to run before you can walk. <laughs> <laughs>
So true. He takes flight. And I'm gonna watch all the Marvels again. I think I'm gonna watch Iron Man. It's been a while. I mean, it's such in a Spider Man mode. I've been watching all the old Spider Mans and fucking I mean, just yeah, Spider Man mode so hard. But now I think it's time to get Iron Man again. Do you want to do a? You just want to finish off with the Spider Man review, and I'll just edit. Yeah, it. fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. We're about to go into spoiler territory. Yeah, spoilers if you haven't seen Spider Man. No, you keep making me think you're gonna light one, and I, I keep my brains like, oh, oh shit, lighter, <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes away, and then you flick it back, and I'm like all excited. <laughs> I'll smack it after. Spider Man. All right, Spider Man, No Way Home, masterpiece. I fucking loved it. Uh, everything, like I can't even like, dude. Start off with the first scene. Like you know the first, when like everyone's found out that he's Peter Parker and the, and oh, everyone's man. at his door and everything like man my anxiety watching that was just like fuck like they made that feel real like you just like oh shit like everyone's like are you Spider Man are you Spider are you Spider Man's girlfriend oh. like oh, I was just like oh he touched me he touched me you know that yeah, like, yeah, magic yeah. <laughs> even though she's going you know she's like going out of their way to touch him and oh yeah. and you see that person in real life all the time claiming to be the victim and it's like whoa man you just were all up in his face they portray that really well <laughs> there's so much things in it that they portray it like a reflection to our world that marvel does that all the time but like dude like i watched it again watched it the other day and i was able to pay attention to it this time and um there's so many things in it that it's just like too hard to go into that there's just so many little little hints in it like uh all the easter eggs and and uh like what like the old spider-mans like uh you know at the end mm. where um you see him he, he's now in an apartment and stuff and he's working on his own suit like he's oh, yes. sewing it and it's like a combination like inspired by the first two suits but also you know yeah. his own style it's like you got Toby Maguire's Spider-Man apartment, like exactly. Boy, yeah. the... Give me rent. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, exactly. I was just like, that is so fucking cool. And like, instead of like Toby Maguire's Spider-Man is listening to the radio, but like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man listens to that app on his phone. Yeah. So yeah. he's like in Toby Maguire's apartment, listening to the app that Andrew listens to. It's just like, ah, oh, they couldn't have done that. And I'm so stoked that they're going with um insanely 100 percent comic book accurate suit yep. the one yep. that he had at the yep. end. it's the most like homemade accurate so far and it's got that cool um, like shine like metallic blue you know it's got that cool shine to it yeah, yeah. i'm so like i'm so because like for me i don't know like, the <laughs> iron man suit the iron man suit the tech suit the tech suit is sick i love the tech suit but as soon as he started changing suits i was like I guess it's because we grew up with the Tobey Maguire Spider Man that uh, we love the you know the 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 uh, the grounded Spider Man the one where he, he makes yeah. a suit himself out of fucking cloth and he and he runs into alleyways and and becomes Spider Man and shit like that and, and he's it, and he's alone and he struggles and he's he's broke yeah yeah like because that's one of the he, things that always captured Peter Parker for me was like that aloneness that solitude that struggle yeah. in his everyday life. And I feel like something that was missing yeah. in the MCU Spider-Man is like he had this kind of like, yeah. and it was too much like yeah. Iron Boy Junior. Or he had too much support from the Avengers and I, Iron Man. Like I never felt like there was going to be a place where he he would be broke. Like there's no way. Even just yeah. his suit is like a billion dollar, or however much it's worth. You know what I mean? Had everything for, but like they yeah, they couldn't yeah. have set it up better. Because like, he always said, like yeah. the fact that. He, they got it. Got got all the all the tech suits, all the Iron Man suits, and all the all that easy shit out the way. They did it first, and then you strip all that away from him. Yes. And now he's by himself, and now he's now he's the Spider Man we all know. And he's like, it was a long a origin pass. story, and Aunt May being the, yeah. Ben, you know, Uncle Ben in that universe. So that was pretty yeah. Because cool. I was thinking, like, Dude. man, they never they never gave us his origin story, you know, like. Yeah, you can yeah. just say that, oh, okay, we get it. He got bit by a spider. Uncle Ben dies. Yeah. Great power, great responsibility. So, yeah, we all know it, but 
you want to see it so you can at least emotionally connect with that version of the character you know yeah exactly so i reckon it, it just took a while to get there and i was like oh that was a cool twist that didn't get you know yeah it was one of my yeah, predictions like, was there an uncle ben? Early. yeah they, they never like kind of state is there an uncle ben or not they do mention that aunt may like he's she's been through a lot so she's probably lost someone but like they never say it's uncle ben or whatever but man when dude i'm so like happy with how they um what's the word they kind of like brought closure or like did justice for andrew garfield spider-man actually like that, that joking one. around the whole time that one you ain't even the shit anymore he's like oh, fuck like like he, he, he stole the show, i reckon i reckon he stole the show like in in terms of yeah. moments you know like and just seeing the banter between yeah. them and that portal scene oh man when he the you, you should have seen the audience man they just roared like when they found out it was <laughs> that would have been, andrew garfield that would have got on. You wouldn't and, be able to hear what they were fucking saying. The apparently, screaming. apparently he, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire snuck in to one of the premiere nights to see the reaction. So that, that yeah. was cool to see, you know, that people, they really do love him, you know. And he was down on himself. Yeah. It was like that meta part where the, the character is like, oh, you're amazing, man. You know, and he's like putting, he's like, oh, I'm yeah. the lame one, you know. And it's Dude, probably, that was... he's probably feeling that on some level in, in real life. Oh. It's like that awkward middle 100... child. Yeah. 100%. Everyone gave him shit. They joke about it. Everyone yeah. gave him shit when that first when that first came out, and now everyone loves Andrew Garfield. You know, yeah, couldn't have been set up any better. Like, fucking, like they're joking about it throughout the whole for the whole thing. Like, Electro coming up to Andrew Garfield, spider me like, you ain't even the shit anymore. <laughs> and he's like, oh, we would, we need to find like, oh, this is now Peter Park. We need to find the real one. He's like, ouch, like, it's just copying it that like he he knows he's the the middle might spider-man and they like i loved it how they did that and um and how they made toby Maguire's spider-man like a um like he's like a like a father the father spider-man like he's like a yeah, man a few words barely says anything but he's like so mature and so like like giving wisdom to all the other the, the other spider-mans it's just like oh they couldn't have They've just done them other Spider Mans so much justice. I'm like so stoked that they just they had those conversations like like having the conversations you'd want to see, like where they're like, Who who are the craziest villains that you fought? It's like, oh yeah, you know, I once fought like an alien made of black goo. Andrew Garfield was like, I wanna fight an alien. Like yeah. what is it? Maybe that's foreshadowing as well, because I heard rumors of him being in the new Venom verse you know yeah. like it, it could yeah. be the andrew garfield spider-man versus venom i reckon that would that be cool too. that would be cool i would be happy with that i'll be so stoked with that because there's there's now a venom in both worlds there's that little drop of venom yeah. in the mcu world and now there's eddie eddie brock and um yeah andrew garfield in the sony spider-man world now so it's like i reckon that a different eddie brock in the mcu but probably more yeah. comic book accurate because you know, Eddie Brock should have some sort of a relationship with Peter Parker before he even becomes Venom. Yeah. You know, that would make a better story than just yeah. him being Venom in his own universe and then the Spider-Man from another universe. Like, it would be cool, don't get me wrong, the action scene would be spectacular, but the story won't be as potent if they interact. Yeah. You know what I mean? They should do Eddie yeah, Brock. Yeah, yeah. Right. I reckon, yeah, they'll find a way to do it. Or, like, maybe a new character, like maybe a Harry Osborn version of him. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, Harry. But, um, don't tell Harry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, I really hope that, like with the with the new MCU uh, trilogies of Spider Man, because they said they're gonna um, continue with him. I really, because now they've got they've, they've had Spider Man in space, they've had him overseas, they've had him do this multi dimensional stuff. With Doctor Strange. It'll be really cool to like, um like see a grounded spider-man now that like, like he's done all that shit now he's like versing mob bosses like the kingpin or something like that have and you like, seen oh daredevil dude daredevil yeah daredevil's in it i haven't seen the netflix series though but i like dude, know of it, it and i know scenes of it i'll say this but i will say this that daredevil i've watched it now i've watched two seasons of it and yeah. it is by far the best marvel show there is it trumps right. the mcu shows 
Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll give like it a how go. It's written, I'm have the, br- the brutality, and now it's canon. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and Kim. That's what's making me like, yeah, I'm keen, keen to see it now because like series Kim... contender. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's scary. It's like he killed Spider-Man in the, brig. in the um, into the Spider Verse, the animated movie. Did he? Oh yeah, yeah, Kingpin. Yeah, he fucking beats the shit out of him. Yeah, just one time. crushes him. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, really, yeah. It'll be really yeah, cool. Punishes in it as well. And he's like, you know, he's such a perfect... He's got his own. Yeah, he's got his own he's show. Got show like, like, he he yeah. debuts in Daredevil. So season two Daredevil is when Punisher first comes into the picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's That's cool. brutal, he's man. Punisher action figures. I love the look of like, his guns and shit. It's fucking sick. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, man, just, like, what? All the universes are just connecting, eh? And... Bleed yeah, each other. Dude. How fucking good was um, Green Goblin? Oh, the best. I think after oh, watching this so- movie, it made me like it made him my favorite villain. I, like it was always Doc Ock, and I've always loved Green. Yeah, Ock, me too. The way that he did this movie, because he was the true villain mm-hmm. of the of the show, right? I mean, come on. Yeah, it's like pure malice, so evil and unsettling, and he's like, you know, when. Uh, Tom Holland's just like smashing the fuck out of him and he's just like laughing like yeah. <laughs> yes more. like he wants him to kill him you know he's like the joke <laughs> I love that bit <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was just such like a like, <laughs> like a clown yeah, you just like, holy <laughs> shit you just it was like how the Joker Dude, is crazy. Batman's beating him just laughing at him like laughing in his face it's just like <laughs> such a like makes you just powerless <laughs> I'm, he's <laughs> loving this. I'm giving him what he wants. Like this sucks. Like, <laughs> fuck. And he's got a kid, and then Toby comes in and just gives him that look. Doesn't even have to say a single word. And then he went full yeah. circle. His moment because you know obviously he let Goblin die by his own glider, so he saved him. Yeah. But the Andrew Garfield well, yeah. being MJ man, that was oh, that was the best. That, that to was me was like that moment of when. Uh, like Captain America picks up Thor's hammer for the first time, like that. Yeah, fuck yeah, like that. You know, it's such a awesome redemption. cinematic moment. You know, they did it so well. They like, I thought, like, thought about this movie and like hearing about it and stuff, and I'm like, like thinking they're either gonna overdo it or not do enough or like something like that. Like I was kind of like having my doubts. Like they're just gonna, it's gonna be too much going on in the one movie. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to focus on what's going on, but like they fucking nailed it, and I was actually surprised that like, of course, well, of course I'm gonna fucking nail it, but like, I was still surprised like, fuck, they they didn't slip at all, like at least in my opinion. And the that, chemistry, you know, between was, the, the Spider Man was like genuinely awesome. Like it wasn't like yeah. a awesome oh. cliche cameo thing. It was like a they played a vital role in the narrative, and they didn't overshadow. Yeah. Tom Holland, you know what I mean? Yeah, like they supported. They kept it. Real. Yeah, and apparently uh, that's what you Andrew, can tell. That's what Andrew and Toby wanted in real life. You know, that's so cool about the actors are very tied in, obviously, with Peter Parker. That they have to be. That's why they got cast. Yeah. That's why they're so good. Um, but oh, they did. Yeah. That's such a Peter Parker thing something. to do, you know, because <laughs> they could come in, yeah. and, you know, steal all the glory or whatever. But they're like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. This is his. I like how they were like kept it really brief of what's going on in their worlds, like super brief. And and if anything, they'll just mention what we've already seen before. So it's I like, wanted to know more. I was like, what else did you get yeah. up? To? Did you fight the vulture? What about Mysterio? How's Mysterio? <laughs> was it that yeah. guy? Was it the Bruce Campbell guy? I knew it was that Bruce Campbell guy. <laughs> yeah, I think he was. I think he was uh, gonna play Mysterio. <laughs> it was yeah, yeah but now oh. Sam Raimi's he he's gonna direct or he already directed Doctor Strange 2 and that's like a direct yeah. to No Way Home so I'm still maybe there's still some surprises in there now this is my question to you do you think yeah. that Tobin oh, Maguire oh, will return in the MCU do you think this is a one and done Disney Sony deal see you later it was good while it lasted leave it at that you don't want to mess with that or do you think they're going to come back and well milk more oh, fuck, I don't know now because like it was already like such a holy shit that they did this in the first place. Like they actually got all the Spider-Mans and it's just like, whoa, like, so it gets like anything's possible now. Like MCU could have 
Tom Holland Spider Man and continue down that road, and then you also got Andrew Garfield Spider Man movies coming out alongside it. It's just like we could we could have that. Like, yep. why can't we have that? It's it's canon now, so like it's not like your mind's gone trying to pick favorites. It's like they they both are existing. Like we know they exist now. They've met. Like I don't know. I just think it's so fucking cool. So I reckon. Um, I reckon probably the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man maybe not see much of probably just because like his story is done uh, Andrew Garfield left yeah. a bit of a like the way that the number Amazing Spider-Man 2 ended it's like you didn't get a yeah. full circle like but his story wasn't complete at all it just started and he got screwed out of it that's what we want to say we, it's and only darkest, fair and it fucking. ended on the darkest tone possible like no one suffered. That that's the worst thing that ever happened to Peter Parker across three universes. Is he's fucking yeah. He's MJ dying. Hmm. Like, and I reckon that'll be that's... cool that if they did, went back to him, that how he was saying, like he he got vengeful and started pulling his punches, so he was actually fucking people up when he was yeah. bashing them. He was actually yeah. killing them. He would have killed. Yeah, he would have definitely killed yeah. some people. And like, that goes that's against, like an that goes against everything. Yeah, so that'll be like interesting because now he's like dark or had a dark side or had a dark past. He understands darkness. For him to like verse Venom now, because if Venom's going to come in and verse him, it's like because that was like they, Daredevil's whole thing. It was like he doesn't kill. He's a, he's like a Catholic. Yeah. He's a Catholic man who's a lawyer in this show, and he, yeah, yeah, that's his line that he can never cross. But of course, when you've when you fight monsters in the underworld and it just gets uglier and deeper and you get put in a situation where that your morals get tested to its extreme. Mm. Yeah. I think, yeah. Cause I think in the comic books, uh, daredevil and Peter Parker were, were friends and you know, he's his lawyer and stuff. Well, he is now obviously after no way home, but then the, the, memory, so- thing, the memory thing. So I guess Peter Parker would have to go out of his way to him if he needs help. So I don't know. Sure. I've been watching those like, like videos of like, like those like nerdy geeky videos of like people trying like breaking down all the Easter eggs and breaking out like what's next and they go into full detail scene by scene like I love that shit I'm such a, I'm such a geek when it comes to that shit I love like <laughs> that while while I'm drawing I'm just like fucking like listening oh fuck I get, should be learning about the the world outside of you I'm like fuck yeah a bit of escapism never hurts <laughs> fucking, I love it man. Yeah. But um, I was going to ask you. I was like, I thought of this question because I was like, asking myself this question. Um, out of the three Spider Mans that are that that are in No Way Home and where they're at in that point in time, um, which Spider Man or Peter Parker would you feel like you resonate towards the most out of the three of them at this stage of my life and where they are in in the movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well. Bit of both, like in their own movie, in their own times, like like before Andrew Garfield, before he goes dark, obviously, and like even while Toby Maguire's oh, right, Spider Man was their own movies. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Like e- e- look at it either way. Like who who would you feel like you if you were Spider Man? Who would you like resonate with? The obviously, most? obviously, Toby Maguire is always the one that I connected with the most because it's the one I grew up with. But if I'm being honest and trying to be like objective and see which one of my personalities actually fits it probably yeah, be, yeah it'd probably have to be andrew garfield because like he skates he's into photography so he's like a bit of a like i'm a nerd too but i'm not too much of a nerd like peter parker getting picked on fuck that that's just not part yeah, of it yeah <laughs> yeah i feel like even in that uh probably andrew garfield same yeah, you too. Exact same thing. I never thought yeah, of it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I never like really thought about it before, but yeah, no shit. Like Tom Holland's sick. Like he's Spider Man sick, and I can't like obviously anyone can relate to the movie they're yeah. watching and stuff. But like he's still young. He's still young. He hasn't gone through yeah, that. Definitely. Now, now he's gone uh, through that. You know, because my big complaint yeah. with Holland Spider Man is he hasn't suffered enough. That was always my biggest thing. It's like no, he hasn't suffered enough. Now he's. He hasn't suffered enough. Now he's done it. And now, all of it. After Infinity War, 
even after Infinity War and Endgame, because my friend's like, yeah, but what about Tony Stark? It's like, yeah, but the whole world lost Tony Stark. That wasn't just his yeah. personal pain. Yeah. He would share that with everyone. You know, I'm not saying it's not hard, but it's not the same as losing like your Aunt May or, you know, the yeah. love of your life or your best friend or, you know what I mean? It's a different mm. thing. And he needed to, he needed to lose one of them. Unfortunately, well, probably like it had to be May, but that's just, that's who makes Peter Parker, Peter Parker. It's a cruel fate, but also yeah, self-sacrificial. That's his archetype. He puts his own well yeah. aside for, for others. And that's really hard to do. But I think he oh, nice. represents the best the best of us. He just will never go down that route. Because Doctor Strange, he's like the wise wizard. And he's like, but the, their lives are meaningless on the grand scale of things. And like he's looking at it like logically. Yeah. But then Peter Parker's like, yeah, but you're still fucking sending someone to die, man. That's still wrong doesn't matter if you're looking at yeah. it on a little scale that's why you know spider-man spider-man and i thought it was actually really yeah. cool that he actually bet dr strange 1v1 i'm sure dr strange if he put all his yeah. like 100 but he fucking went past yeah. him and he was the only one that could have that that reflex like when he's out of body and he's like trying to yeah because he's in the box and he's just just just, just. <laughs> yeah he's got the spider sense he'll never do that again yeah <laughs> <laughs> but he yeah, yeah that was that was a bit in the mirror dimension and that's always awesome and he like beating the mass and so that, that i love really, really that, cool. i love that spider-man is now like the heart of the mcu where it, where it belongs you know because he was like the, yeah. like the late bloomer who came in they added spider-man later while fucking yeah while kicking andrew garfield in the balls on the way Stepping on his balls <laughs> on the way to rebooting <laughs> to top all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's like it's, it's, it was it was shit as it was happening, but because this movie like saved that, and then you can look back on all of it with hindsight and just be like, couldn't have played out any no, 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 better yeah. way. For, exactly for the character, for the actors, and yeah. for the audience. Hundred like, percent. They they fixed it. They fixed it. <laughs> they fixed it. Did it. <laughs> My God, we did it! It's probably like the whole Sony and Marvel thing that they like shake and head like they sat down like we need to fix this. We need to fix this. <laughs> like this is. <laughs> we sort this out. They fucking did it. They actually did they it. Pull, they pulled it, it off. Because awesome. the expectations, yeah. man, they oh, they exceeded my expectations, and my expectations were like fucking. As high yeah, as possible, and it actually exceeded it. So, like maybe oh, as a movie it. in and of itself, like it might. I'm sure you can criticize it in a way, and you know, explain how it's not like a ten out of ten masterpiece movie. But for a Spider-Man movie, it's ten out of yeah, ten. Yeah, that was come on. This fun. And that's what it's for. Like you have to judge a movie for the audience that it's catering for. You know. Oh man. <laughs> oh man, when I first saw it, there was this funny bit because I went and saw it. Hey. Cinematic history we just witnessed, like this. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Right. It was like Infinity War. Like, we thought that was a big deal, like 10 years of all these movies from the same universe, coming. you know, coming together for this final epic endgame finale piece. And then yeah. here we got Spider-Man, which is like across universes. And these Ten are with Spider-Man that we grew up with way before the MCU. This shit, if, the MCU wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Sam Ra Raimi's Spider-Man. Like, what can they do next that will surprise us? That's the question. What, what can they fucking do next? Fucking Jurassic Park and Fast and the Furious? <laughs> Probably, actually. I've heard rumors. <laughs> I heard they're doing that with Batman, actually, the, with the new Flash movie. Really? Like, uh, Michael Keaton, he's he's confirmed as playing Batman and Ben Affleck and oh, Christian what? Bale is rumored. Yeah, so Flash, obviously, Where? he runs around and breaks the universe and opens portals, I guess. Sort of like a multi. Oh, yeah, I've heard. Flash I'm, is kind of like Spider Man. I think I've heard something similar to that, but like, fuck, why not? They're free to do it now. They're fucking do it. Fucking, we want to see it. We've, see, we've seen everything now. Let's just start mixing it up. King Kong and, and fucking Terminator. Let's do it. <laughs> Put them all together. Put them in one room and let's see what happens. Let's just do it. I think that's oh. what everyone starts. Have, have you heard about do it? Have you heard about the origin okay. of, uh, like, I don't know if this is true, but this has been a thing that, like, this lady has tried to sue the movie holders for stealing her idea. 
but apparently matrix and terminator were, or was a part of the same story right it was written by this this black woman um i forgot her name but she was going through hollywood basically trying to pitch this idea and they're like nah man black women don't do sci-fi and then obviously she was like sitting in the theater and then she sees a trailer for terminator she's like what the fuck <laughs> still my idea uh -huh. and they're like hey what the f what <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> you're in the cinema <laughs> like this fucking big les <laughs> story that you've been working yeah. on. <laughs> someone, someone show me something like that like uh it was like someone sent me a video like a youtube video of the ending of the latest um james bond and um like i get messages saying they the, the way they killed james bond is exactly how big les died in trim Island three like he like sacrificed himself by like just letting nukes hit him and shit and <laughs> telling his loved one oh, fuck, like, oh, and just like staring a nuke in the face it was like it was on an island as well and i was like Oh, it's close, but like, it could have been a coincidence, but obviously a coincidence. But like, <laughs> but yeah, like they also think, yeah, it's good. Imagine if they watched that scene and fucking did it, they like, sort of got inspiration. That would be pretty cool. But I'm sure that happens so many times, and like, it happens with songs as well. Like, like the Beatles fucking cop that a lot. Like, they'll make a song, and someone will come over and be like, "Fucking, I wrote this song. I had I thought of this in my head. Did you write it down?" No, but like it was in my head. Uh, well, uh, apparently this is a novel. Well, I, I'm not sure. Well, I guess we'll. I'm not sure. But it's an interesting claim because uh, just the the I'm more interested at the idea that Terminator is a prequel to Matrix, right? And John Connor is actually Neo. So over time, the machines Skynet obviously win. And then it turns into, you know, they turn humans into batteries and create this simulated reality so they just keep beating the machines or whatever. So. Yeah, true. I yeah. fucking see that now. Yeah. I just remembered doing that. I just remembered, like. <laughs> pretty like, cool, huh? That happens. That's a pretty yeah. cool idea. Like, the two. Imagine if the. Because they're two one of the greatest sci fi movies of all time. And to know that they're. Yeah. They could, they could potentially be from the same universe. Yeah, and that, I think that JC, like John, Dr. what she says <laughs> anyway is that she he was like a metaphor for uh, Christ, Jesus Christ. That's why it's JC, John Connor, and that he's yeah, right. the savior for humanity, the one, and he resurrects from the dead. So it's like that pattern plays out. Yeah, for the both of them. archetype. Yeah, interesting. Oh, I'm gonna like watch it all so differently now. I'm going to like full <laughs> see it as a prequel. Fucking Yep. That's... But she's been trying to sue them. Cool. She's been trying to sue them for decades or something like that. I don't know. Wow. I don't know the story, but it's a pretty cool idea. But Spider-Man, yeah. fucking awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Norman's on some badical, honey. <laughs> I've been saying that a lot, like all yesterday and shit. So it's like, fuck. That's a neat trick. That sense of yours. <laughs> <laughs> you can do what that. What else is he saying? <laughs> ah, you, well, know, he said, you know I'm something of a scientist myself. He yeah, he actually that. says that in the movie. <laughs> or the pointing, the point, the meme pointing. They did that in a clever way. Yeah, yeah they him? had to. No, him? Yeah, yeah, that, of course. People would have been... They, they fucking had to do that. Is there, is, there, is there anything that you think they could have that you would have liked to see or any maybe minor nitpicks uh oh, i guess mate i reckon that they did it perfectly but like maybe would have been cool to see doc hawk evil for a bit longer yeah fight a bit longer that's probably my only thing but like the way they did it and his fight on the bridge was fucking so sick but in the where they fixed him and turned him good and kind of used him for advice and shit was sick. I love, like, um, what's his name? Alfred Molina. Is that, is that how you say his name? Alfred Molina, yep. It was oh. so cool seeing him again. Like, after 20 years or however long it's been, 18 years. Fucking so cool. He's my favourite. He was my favourite villain as a kid. I couldn't believe how cool he was when I was a kid. Like, fucking robot arms and shit. And, um... 
yeah, that was just and so the music cool. they, they, they used like remixes of the OG soundtrack as yeah, well. Yeah, little, little overlays in the background. I was like, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 I'm still waiting to get this devil's breath out of my system so I can go to this, so I can go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep forgetting you're like, can't, can't catch it from here or? <laughs> yeah, probably it's digitally transmissive. Like I'm, I'm sweating. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, you said you just opened up the door and she must have been like, dude, you're sweating. And then she just turned the fan on. I'm just like, oh, thank you. So this whole time, like us recording, I'm just like, <gasps> I can sweat and bullets. Yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty warm in here. I've got a fan here that I can easily turn on, but I just oh, I can't be bothered. I'm not too hot. This is getting a little bit muggy. The window's closed. Yep. So. All right. Um. Apart from that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's pretty good. That's I fun. like. There's always like little nitpicks. I'm sure you can think of, but ju- I think basically when Toby and Andrew enters the movie. That's like 11 out of 10. Like whatever minor nitpicks there are from other parts of the movie just elevates the whole experience just to see them yeah. on screen together. Man, look, like having a band, you know, fighting together. It's, like, oh. it's what you imagine. It's kind of what you imagined, how like you wanted it to go. And yep. they did exactly kind of like what you were expecting. I don't know. It's like they, they knew the people that make it are like fucking everyone's thinking this. They want to talk about their web shooters and, and organic web. Yeah. Like. Web web block. It was web block. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I actually have one of those. Like, I feel like that was all sort of unscripted. Like it felt so legit. Like so. Like, have you had web block? Like, like, yeah. I had this like existential crisis. Like he plays it so casually. I love the way he delivers his lines. He's just old, you know, he's just like, he's seen it all. So he's chill about it. So like, yeah, yeah. You know, this happened. So from, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My That's best so friend, he tried, he tried to, you know, he tried to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> he's so like, refreshing. Using the, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to hear him talk again. Like Toby Maguire, like how he like he pauses a lot and breathes before everything he says. He's like, yes. is there somewhere, uh, that, your friend would go like a building or a like it's just like really good to see that pace again it's like fuck everyone tom holland talks so fast and so does andrew garfield it's like yeah he yeah. would actually like when <laughs> Toby. Oh, oh my god it's i can't like, believe doing it <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> yeah, very, yeah. very erratic yeah yeah toby's like oh he's when always Toby, old, especially now obviously like 20 yeah. years you know later <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's like it slows it down so you actually lean in and actually hear every word yeah. he says it's like every word he says but, but like, when you ask me who i'm most like as well like i feel like there is a lot of toby in the like i'm way more chill like andrew's the yeah. most extroverted i feel or one of the more extroverted ones yeah toby's like super chill 100 percent. Oh. i'm very chill i'm, I'm really chill. related yeah, same. <laughs> I really, 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 I really say I really chilled. <laughs> yeah, I, I really relate. I'm, I'm uber chilled. <laughs> yeah. Too I really like Andrew Garfield. He was like the most sort of just like his awkwardness, I guess. Like, like I remember me as like sort of like a teenager or like um, uh, in my early twenties or whatever. Like, I felt like that, like that sort of uh, awkwardness towards older adults, like how he converses with like Dr. Connors and shit like that. Like a I know I just really related to him and obviously as a as a kid growing up with Toby Maguire Spider-Man like you love him so much that you sort yeah, of yeah yeah and he's and you can't you beat wanted him. to beat him yeah <laughs> that's that. that. from evil <laughs> finish it <laughs> fuck <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny. Man, Spider-Man one's a comedy <laughs> when you watch it. He's like, fuck, man. That was so mean. Like, I'm laughing, but it's like such a cruel <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> He's just laughing. 
You may as well be the dude from Wolf Creek just laughing, laughing at them crying. So scared. He could, be, he could play a really good Joker. He's like, he's convinced oh, no. that he could play an Oscar. He could play the best, the, you know, he, he could play the potentially the best Joker that we know of so far. He's, he's already the Joker. Look at his face, man. Yeah. I fucking hope he does. He plays like the Arkham, Ark, the Arkham game, the game's Joker. Like how he's real old and skinny and the short hair, that sort of Joker. Like, fuck, he'll be so good at that. I really hope they actually, because they know it. DC fucking knows it. And I'm pretty sure Willem Dafoe fucking knows it as well. So like, they got to give it a go. I reckon i am fucking hope so that would be so sick everyone wants to see it everyone knows it make him the joker <laughs> perfect fuck <laughs> fuck oh man <laughs> <laughs> and have you noticed how the he, his house what i noticed is he, he has a lot of like masks from like indigenous cultures and stuff like that and you know it's believed yeah. that's why like in like for example in the bible they talk about the false idols and not having like masks and statues because that can attract entities and spirits and stuff like that so it's like a it's like a cage for them and if you look at his house again you just look around his house and look how crazy that motherfucker is it's got masks True. everywhere so he was already opening that portal i think into his life and maybe there's a yeah, deeper true. mystical origin. You know, I don't think it's just like, oh, I don't think it was just a chemical or something. I think it's something deeper. And even, yeah. like, even that, yeah, yeah we'll see. Entity, the Green Goblin. It's not Norman Osborn, it's an entity. Yeah, it's an entity Fucking... getting possessed. And then think about it, when he broke his helmet, yeah. Still it was here him free. Because where's the spirit going to go now? It's like, that, that mask was probably the only thing holding Norman together yeah true without it he's, he's just in his head i've watched you behind norman's dormant eyes <laughs> <laughs> so good fucking love that do you think i something? love <laughs> <laughs> yeah. something maybe there's something there but it was the couple the goblin did i didn't do it don't, that, don't that was the only that was the only villain that I feel like was like genuinely evil. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. not Norman o Osborn himself, but whatever that goblin character is, there's something yeah. coming out and it won, you know, and it, yeah. it even pushed Peter Parker. Like if it wasn't for the other two Spider-Men, he would have killed. <laughs> he would have he would have crossed that line and there's no return. Yeah. That, line. that and, was sick when he was beating the fuck out of him. I really like that. Somewhere, oh, this is a fucking get him. I, Kill him. I remember Kill someone him. complaining that Ned, <laughs> someone complained that Ned had like he got the portal thing too easily. Like, Doctor Strange took forever to get to that point where he had to be put in this extreme cold environment, and then you know what I mean? Then he brought yeah. him the portal and stuff. Um, he's got magic when I think in about it, yeah, exactly. That when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, but Doctor Strange was like this ultra materialistic in his head doctor person they're the ones that struggle yeah. the most with magic you know what i mean even though he's the greatest yeah. of all he had that biggest barrier to yeah i just wanted to defend that point because even ned he's like his grandma oh, he's already into the magic it's in her blood and that does yeah. matter i can see i'm like oh yeah he's young yeah because yeah. someone's like oh they did dr strange dirty and it's like no <laughs> i think you look perfectly up. yeah that was perfect no exactly it makes sense and kids like, are usually more open like, to, to magic and stuff like that anyway you know what i mean yeah like, he's, like, he's a doctor they're gonna they're gonna they're like all oh, fucking da, 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 da. of course he's yeah, just struggling he had to be that's why he had to be put in a life you know, threatening situation so he had to get out of his head you know what i mean just yeah <sighs> fucking so cool man mm, i want to watch all the marvel movies again <laughs> <laughs> i watched i watched the uh, infinity war and and endgame recently because i wanted to do because when i first watched no way home obviously like when you're really excited you gotta wait a bit of time for you to like really judge where you're at i was like i think yeah, i enjoy man. it more than endgame oh but man as a spider-man as a spider-man fan a... yeah <laughs> but i re-watched it and i'm like nah i think to me this this ranks number one on my marvel at least mcu movie 
I don't know. Mm. Would you say this beats like Spider Man Two? Too soon to tell. What are you, where, where are you on the ranking? Like, what's what's like your top three right now? Fuck. Spider Man Two, number one. That's just fucking so good. Um, <laughs> maybe Pizza time. Spider Man One, like the first Spider Man, because that's just like you know. Obviously, grew up with it. It's, it's first of its kind, kind of superhero movie that we grew up with. We so it goes Spider Man Two is first, Spider Man One the second, um, and even though it should be first, but I just love Spider Man Two so much more. And this new Spider Man, it's just it's they just did it so good. Uh, it just yeah. But um. If I was to pick a fourth, I really do like the the first Andrew Garfield Spider Man with the Lizard. I actually do really like that movie. I didn't like the second one. A good soundtrack. I like the soundtrack. Yeah. But I like I like his I, like... I like his suit in the second one better than the first one. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. So. And like the wrinkles in his suit, like when he's like yeah. free diving, and you can see like that material. Yeah, oh, no. You know, I love that. Oh, and I will say, oh, they they put all those costumes. By the way, that that Spider Man game. So you can just play it yeah. as like Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> I've, been, I've been playing that recently. I always switch between them like constantly. Well, what do you reckon but, um, of Into the Spider-Verse? Because I reckon that was like one of the, uh, best, the best ones. Yeah, that story-wise, that's really cool. Really like, uh, that's probably my least watch. I, I keep seeing it. I go to watch it, but I'm always too focused on like, of what's currently going on at the moment, but I might actually watch that. But tonight. there's a new one coming out. There's, it's going to start its own thing, you know. Have you seen the new Sick. trailer? Yeah, not yet. Oh, you told we've talked about this before, and I still haven't seen it yet, but I will because I'm gonna. Yeah, I watch the. Into I do the like. Well, I do like my. Well, you asked me which Peter Parker do I uh, resonate with the most, and it would probably have to be Miles Morales if he's in in it. Just because the fact that he's yeah he has a Latina mum, so he's Spanish, so we share the same half. Yeah, fuck <laughs> well, yeah. Do, do you relate to him like? But I like the photography. But I like I'm more like I don't think he's a photographer. He's more of like graffiti artist or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Did you play the um, Miles Morales game? I did. Spider Man game. I did. What I did, did you relate to him in that story? Yes, that's when. Well, that's yeah. when I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I love Miles Morales. He's awesome because he yes, made his yeah. own. He made his own mark in that game, you know. Because he's always like, oh, he's yeah. Spider Man sidekick, but in that game, yeah, he stepped yeah. up. His own, the city his own respects fella. him now. Yeah, Fuck people love like Miles Morales. Him. Yeah, people really genuinely. I'm really, yeah, I can't wait till they bring because they've mentioned him so many times in the MCU. So they're bringing him out at some point. So it's like I can't wait to see that come in. Oh, fuck. That's they, got what... so, they can fucking, fucking Marvel. They can fucking Peter, do anything Peter, now. Just... Peter deserves a friend, you know. I, I just like seeing Miles and Peter together, you know, just having someone yeah, to be... their powers with and, you know. That would be cool chemistry. Oh, shit. My battery's got to die soon. I walked away from my charger. <laughs> I realised my battery's... Oh, good. Probably got to die soon. Did you want to... <laughs> Did you want to call it then? Yeah, may as well. We fucking pretty. We covered up the Spider Man. We covered. We we did it. We covered did. everything. We've been on the been on the phone for. We've been on the blower for fucking hours. <laughs> Ow. Can't Ow. see. Ow. Did you press record? Oh no. Nah, nah of course I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I do it to you all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You might, this one would hurt. This one would hurt. We've been sweating. Yeah. We went through like such deep waters that I'm like, it, it takes energy to go in and out. <laughs> yeah. On, on yeah, I'm keen. I'm keen to go outside and yep. puff this. So I'm gonna lay lay on my back in the grass. Yep. Me too. I'm gonna. But yeah, man, it's been awesome chatting with you. Thanks for. This is our longest oh, podcast in, in history, but I like it. It's good. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, me too, man. It was fucking sick. It's fucking always a pleasure to come on to your like podcast and just talking to you in general. Like we have these combos on the phone anyway. They're, they're like little mini podcasts. Yeah, like, always. This is, this is yeah, yeah. Like every time we chat, it's like yeah. two, two hours of bars, and I was like, oh shit, there we go. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah fuck, I hope, hope the um hope your your fans and all that start fucking enjoyed having a little chin wag with us <laughs> listening to wheelbarrows of shit talking <laughs> this bit of that bit of yeah. spider-man yeah. <laughs> can't imagine that like, can't listen it to this good. who doesn't like spider-man they're gonna like put up with us just talking about it throughout the whole thing <laughs> Fucking you agony, not Spider-Man. Nah, hey. but I've always been a defender. Even when Spider-Man Three came out, I loved it when it. Yeah. Came out. I was one of the very ones got, that I genuinely I got, loved it. Yeah. And I got Spider-Man Three action figures and shit. It's just when I watch it now, I just go like, "This is definitely like, it's <laughs> good, but like, it's funny, but like, but it's the entertaining. Human, like, I watch it with yeah. Yusenia. Like, it's not the best Spider-Man, right? But we'll watch it and we'll genuinely laugh out loud because it's got so many just legendary meme moments. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's too good. It, it does elevate it. It's got Bully Maguire. Yeah. Man. I can't beat that shit. Step on yeah. the not... it does a little dance. Oh, we, weren't, we weren't ready for it. So my favorite we is ready. when he's eating the lolly or the lollipop or whatever, just like really obnoxiously, just put his feet up on the ground. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> James is just looking at him. <laughs> I watched it the other night too. It's so good. Get that chew. <laughs> Thanos, I just picture him with the Thanos glove. With those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to watch them again. Bully Maguire. Where he's like, if you the Darth Maul one, where he's Darth Maul and he's like, Fight no Obi Wan and Qui Gon Jinn like fuck it's so good stabs him with a lightsaber <laughs> how'd that get in there <laughs> double the money <laughs> I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye see a chunk <laughs> you gonna cry yeah you gonna cry Hulk <laughs> Junior <laughs> you gonna cry <laughs> yeah all right brother well <laughs> always a pleasure we've gone through man we went through a lot of different rabbit holes but I think it all kind of tied in together hopefully at the end yeah I reckon so I can't even I can't remember the majority of it but I'm sure I'm sure it'll be uh, interesting it it will eventually yeah maybe not today (laughs) maybe not even tomorrow but one day (laughs) later that day (laughs) (laughs) alright man alright thanks for having me yeah yeah thanks for uh, thanks for thank you (laughs) This <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Good joke. Now, uh, before we go, do you want to like search, tell people at home where to reach her? Same as always, Big Les Show, Instagram. Same as always, just Big Les Show official Instagram is, I don't post much on that un- unless I have something to post. And just, I guess my perso, my YouTube, um, Big Les Show official. And quick, quick um, reminder to people that that's like literally only things I'm in and my Patreon. But um, other than that, there's like heaps of different other web, like um, Facebook pages yeah. and and different youtube channels and stuff and fake merch as well so um yeah just a heads up that they are not me but yeah whatever yeah i guess you can figure that out for yourself but other than that yeah should be should be able to easily find me should also be hard too easy yeah. yeah look in the link in the description all right uh, good to have you on i'll we'll catch you catch you soon see you when i'm looking at you thanks man yeah, we'll see you when we're looking at you. <laughs> should, have been, should have heard it. Should have heard it. Should have heard it. <laughs> well, all right, bro. Have a good day. Enjoy your, your lie in the grass. You deserve it. We had a long one. Thanks. So get some food. <laughs> rest. Enjoy the rest of the day. Catch you guys later. Leave a like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Buy a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and go watch Spider Man if you haven't already. <laughs> go do it. It's fucking sick. <laughs> watch the bubble. <laughs> see you, brother. All the best. See you, man. Woo! Woo!